The meeting will come to order. I'd ask that everyone make their way to their seats so that we may begin the meeting. Looks like you folks had plenty of time to get to your seats. So uh, please rise if you are able so the Minutemen, uh, the Wilmington Minutemen will present our nation's colors. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please now join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, I would request that you stay standing if you are able in a moment of silence for those men and women who have served our country, for those overseas whose safe return we await, and for those who we have lo lost this year who have served the town of Wilmington, including Salvador R. Albano, Phyllis M. Allen, Donna M. Alonardo, Alfred V. Antonorelli, Sr., Donald C. Armstrong, Carl A. A. Backman, Jr., Robert F. Barrett, Donna R. Bowden, Richard S. Capone, Jean M. Crane, Charlotte S. DeMarco, Henry S. Dembowski, Maria V. Fernandini, Margaret L. Fleming, Kevin B. Harrington, Matthew J. Kane Jr., Marjorie Lampkin, Michael N. Matt, Penelope L. McGarry, Linda T. McMenamin, Francis P. Nolan, James T. O'Connors, Shirley B. O'Donnell, Adele C. Passmore, Beverly A. Shea, Maureen T. Sheehan, Dolores E. Silva, Mary Thiel, D. Ann Whitney. Please remain standing as the colors exit the hall.
My thank you to the Wilmington Minutemen for helping preserve our history and making it a part of our annual town meeting. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Welcome to the Joanne M. Benton Auditorium at Wilmington High School for the 2023 annual town meeting. Our open town meeting, the most direct form of democracy, meets today, and you, the registered voters of the town of Wilmington, are going to make a lot of important decisions here today to direct your town government over the course of the next year. A few announcements before we get started. Individuals are not permitted to bring any food or drink into the auditorium, but the Wilmington Public Schools Choral and Theater Support Group, CATS, will be selling food and drink in the cafeteria. Bathrooms are located outside of the auditorium to the rights of the doors that you entered the building through. If you do use the bathroom, please take your voting card with you so that we know that you have already checked in. Additionally, for individuals who have signed up in advance, there are student volunteers from the high school providing childcare during the course of this meeting. I want to express my gratitude for those student volunteers for making it possible for many of you to attend as it helps enable more residents to participate in our democratic process. Everyone should have the purple Finance Committee recommendations booklet, which contains the warrant for today's town meeting, and a letter from the moderator, which contains the proposed consent agenda. Throughout the entrance of the auditorium, there are posters hanging up that include a QR code. A QR code is a black and white square object that looks a little bit like a barcode. If you point your smartphone camera at the QR code, a link will pop up, which will bring you to the page, a page on the town's website that contains the warrant and other materials relevant to today's proceedings. At this town meeting, in addition to complying with the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the Wilmington Inhabitant Bylaws, we will use the same rules we use at every town meeting. If you wish to speak on the merits of an article, I'd ask that you approach one of the four microphones placed in the aisles of the auditorium, and I will call on those whom I see first at the microphones. Please identify your name and address so that we may accurately report the minutes of today's meeting. All motions or amendments having to do with the expenditures of money or the amendment of any bylaw must be presented to me in writing and those are Articles 3 through 40, 42, 45, 46, and 47. So if you are making a motion on those articles or planning on amending a motion on those articles, I will need to see those in writing. The maker of the main motion can have up to 10 minutes for comments. <coughs> All of the speakers can have up to five minutes during discussion on a main motion. If you hear me tapping on the microphone, that is your cue that there is 30 sec seconds remaining and to begin to wind down your comments. No person may speak twice on the same question except to correct a mistake or make an explanation. Articles 1 through 40 and 46 will be taken up in order, with the exception of the articles contained in the consent agenda, should that be the desired course of the meeting. I will ask for a brief recess after the last article taken sequentially, so Article 46, before moving on to random draw. Article 45, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, and 47 will be taken up randomly. Non-voters should have a yellow lanyard and should be seated in uh, the section to my right, your left. Voters should have a purple voter card, which should be displayed for any standing votes so that the tellers can count you. Tellers sitting in front, I would ask that you, if you notice any of the individuals to my right or left and wish to speak, please wave or somehow get my attention in case my peripheral vision fails me. Uh, if you are not sure, uh, what we are voting on, please rise to make a point of order. I want to make sure that everyone is well aware of what we are voting on throughout the course of this meeting. Most importantly, we will deal with each other respectfully even where there may be issues where there is disagreement. We understand that not everyone feels the same way about all issues. However, we do want people to feel comfortable participating in town meetings, sharing opinions, and asking questions. Therefore, like at this meeting, like all town meetings, we expect people to refrain from personal attacks, discussion not related to the matter at hand, and discussion raised for the sole purpose of disrupting the assembly, and addressing any other member by name with all discussion to be through the moderator. I do want to thank our tellers, the public buildings department, the school department, the police and fire departments, the IT department, town council, the town manager's office, and the town clerk's office, and all town employees and volunteers who put in work to make today possible. I also want to thank our friends at WCTV who are broadcasting today's meeting for the benefit of viewers at home and recording today for future viewing. Lastly, I want to recognize and thank three longtime volunteers of the town of Wilmington. Robert DePasquale is the now former chair of the Housing Authority. Mr. DePasquale was first appointed to the Housing Authority in 1996 and has been elected to that position since 1998. He decided to seek, not to seek re-election upon the expiration of his most recent term, and I want to thank him for his service to our community. Andrea Hauser of the Sarah D.J. Carter Lecture Fund Committee. Ms. Hauser was first appointed to the Carter Lecture Fund in 1993 and is stepping down after 30 years on the committee. Our thanks to Ms. Hauser for her decades of service to the town of Wilmington. 
Pasquale Pat D'Antonio of the Cemetery Commission. Mr. D'Antonio has served on the Cemetery Commission since 2011 and is stepping away after 12 years. Thank you for your service to our community. Hearing no objections, I declare that the rules of this meeting will be approved by unanimous consent, and we can begin. Greetings in the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and in the manner prescribed by the bylaws of said town. You are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of, of the town qualified to vote in town affairs to meet and assemble at the Beltwell School, precincts 1, 2, and 3, and the Town Hall Auditorium, precincts 4, 5, and 6, Saturday, the 26th day of April, A.D. 2023, at 7.45 o'clock in the forenoon, the polls to be open at 8 a.m. and shall be closed at 8 p.m. for the election of town officers. Ms. Maselli. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that the moderator dispense with further reading of the warrant and take up and make reference to each article by number. Do I have a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded in discussion. Seeing none, those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Article one. <coughs> to bring in your votes on one ballot, respectively, for the following named offices to wit two select board members for the term of three years, two members of the school committee for the term of three years, and one member of the housing authority for the term of five years. You are also hereby further required and directed to notify and warn the said inhabitants of the town of Wilmington who are qualified to vote on elections and town affairs therein, to assemble and subsequently meet in the town meeting at the Wilmington High School Joanne M. Benton Auditorium, Church Street, in said town of Wilmington on Saturday, the 29th day of April AD 2023 at 9 a.m., then and there to act on the following articles. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and honor to present to you those individuals that you elected last week to the aforementioned offices, to the select board, Frank J. West. <laughs> Gary B. De Palma. <laughs> to the school committee, Jennifer Bryson. <laughs> and Michael P. Mercaldi. and to the Housing Authority, Louis Smaglia IV. <laughs> Thank you to all of the individuals willing to step forward to put their names on the ballot to work to improve our community. Thank you to those who served in those offices previously, namely Ju Judy O'Connell of the Select Board, Melissa Plowman of the School Committee, and Robert T. Pasquale of the Housing Authority. There is no need for a motion on Article 1. So we move on to Article 2, and at this time, we're going to entertain a motion, a procedural mechanism that was introduced to our annual town meeting three years ago. We're going to entertain a consent agenda. The articles contained within the consent agenda are included in the chart contained in my letter at the beginning of your warrant booklet. These are historically non-controversial articles, and they are Articles 2, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Mr. Bendel. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and good morning, everyone. I move that Articles 2, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 be approved under a single motion by the consent with Article 2, to hear reports. Article 4, approved as written in the warrant. Article 7, funded by taxation in the amount of $50,000. Article 8, funded by the appropriation of Uber and Lyft tax receipts in the amount of $4,469.20. Article 9, funded by appropriation from the PEG access special revenue account in the amount of $500,000. Article 10, funded by taxation in the amount of $50,000. Article 11, funded by taxation in the amount of $8,000. Article 12, funded by taxation in the amount of $1,500. And Article 13, approved as written in the warrant. Thank you, Mr. Bendelatz. The motion, is there a second? The motion has been made and seconded discussion. Seeing none, we are going to now vote on uh, the articles contained in the consent agenda with one vote. If you are in favor of the articles contained in the consent agenda, that is articles 2, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, as spoken to by Mr. Bendel. So indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Article 3. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds or borrow pursuant to any applicable statute or sum of money for the purpose of paying unpaid bills of previous years or take any other action related there too, Mr. Kyra. Mr. Moderator, I move that the article not be adopted. Second. I'll accept that as a motion. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion. 
Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor of not adopting Article 3, so indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Article 4. Article 4 was voted in the affirmative pursuant to the consent agenda, and the moderator will accept that vote of approval. It's a vote taken thereon. Article 5. To see how much the town will vote, will appropriate for the expenses of the town and the salaries of several town officers and departments, and determine how same shall be raised, whether by taxation, transfer from available funds, or otherwise, or take any other action related thereto, Mr. Doherty. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. I move that the se several and representative sums of, as recommended and presented by the Finance Committee, be raised from the fiscal year 24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town or by transfer from available funds as may be recommended by the Finance Committee and be appropriated for the purpose set forth in Article Number 5. Each budget category, including general government, public safety, public works, community development, public buildings, human services, Wilmington School Department, Shawshank Valley Regional Vocational <coughs> Technical High School District, maturing debt and interest, unclassified and reserve and statutory charges to be taken up and voted on in the order they appear, subject to amendment, and each budget category not open for reconsideration until the entire budget is voted. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a procedural vote to take up the budget by category as it appears in your booklet from pages two through nine. The amounts that we will be voted on are the amounts listed in the column to the far right if you uh, adjust your booklet. Uh, the column titled Recommended Appropriation. The Finance Committee recommends approval for each of these categories. Uh, starting with total general government, which is at the bottom of page three. Again, to the far right. You'll see the recommended appropriation amount of three million six hundred twenty-five thousand seven hundred fifteen dollars. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Motion is made and seconded. Discussion. Seeing none, we'll call for the vote for the amount of three million six hundred twenty-five thousand seven hundred fifteen for total general government. So indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Voted. <coughs> Next to pages four and five for public safety. Total public safety is halfway down page five, the amount of $13,274,236. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion has been made, is there a second? Motion is made and seconded, discussion. See no discussion, we'll call for the vote. Total public safety, $13,274,236. If you are in favor of that sum, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Total Public Works, which begins on page five and goes towards the to the end of page six. <coughs> the amount is seven million seven hundred and eighty-seven thousand six hundred and seventy-four. Do I have a motion? Motion. Actually, I'm sorry, Mr. Doherty, you have a more specific motion, I think you want to make five uh, A. I move that the sum of seven million seven hundred and eighty seven thousand six hundred and seventy four dollars be appropriated for the Department of Public Works and to be and to meet this appropriation, $20,000 be transferred from the sale of cemetery lots and the sum of $20,000 be transferred from interest cemetery trust funds and that both amounts be applied to the line items personal service cemetery full time and that the balance is $7,747,624. Um, Do be raised from fiscal year tax levy and other general revenues of the town? Except that is the main motion. Is there a second? thousand forty five dollars do I have a motion 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 is made is there a second 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 discussion seeing none I'll call for the vote if you are in favor of forty seven million six hundred fifty eight thousand forty five dollars for the Wilmington School Department so indicate by saying aye aye opposed say no voted unanimously Shawshank Valley Regional Vocational Technical High School District in the amount of seven million two hundred sixty seven thousand eight hundred and six dollars do I have a motion 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 has been made and seconded do I have discussion Seeing none, we'll call for the vote for Shawshank Valley Regional Vocational Technical High School District in the amount of $7,267,806. If you are in favor of that sum, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Total maturing debt and interest, Mr. Doherty. I move that the sum of $3,517,368 be appropriate for maturing 
debt and interest, and that to meet this appropriation, the sum of $97,060 be transferred from sewer available funds, and that that sum of $227,580 be transferred from the water department available funds and be applied to the line item maturing debt and interest water, and that the sum of one hundred and 52,000 be transferred from the water department and available funds and be applied to the item maturing debt and interest authorization fees and miscellaneous debt and that the balance of um, $3,040,728 be raised from fiscal year 24 tax levy and, the, and other general revenues of the town. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Discussion. Seeing none, if you are in favor of <coughs> total maturing debt and interest in the amount of $3,517,368 as described by Mr. Doherty in his motion, so indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Total unclassified and reserve, again we're on page nine. Mr. Doherty. I move that the sum of $19,048,223 be appropriated for the unclassified and reserve of which sum of one hundred and $36,612 be transferred from the Water Department available funds and be applied to the unclassified and reserved insurance account and the sum of $299,000 be transferred from the Water Department available funds and be applied to the unclassified and reserved employee life and health insurance account and the sum of $11,749 be transferred from the Water Department available funds and be applied to the unclassified and reserved Medicare employees contribution amount and that the sum of $500,000 be transferred from the Special Reserve Available Funds to be applied to the Unclassified and Reserve PEG Cable Access, and that the remaining balance of $18,100,862 be raised from Fiscal Year 24 Tax Levy and other general revenues of the town. Accept that as the main motion is there. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded in discussion. Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. If you are in favor of $19,048,223 for total unclassified and reserve, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. <coughs> Excuse me. Total statutory charges in the amount of $10,922,027, Mr. Doherty. I move that the sum of $10,922,027 be approved for statutory charges, of which the sum of $990,239 be transferred from the Water Department Available Funds, the sum of $43,805 be transferred from Sewer Available Funds, and that $28,402 be transferred from Special Reserve Available Funds in the total sum of $918,032 be applied to the <coughs> statutory charges retirement contribution account and that the remaining balance of $9,931,786 be raised from the fiscal year tax levy and other general revenues of the town. Motion is made. Is, is there a second? Second. <coughs> Motion is made and seconded. Discussion in the back. Yeah, I just had a question about the school choice line item. I thought um, at a school committee meeting they said it was about $5,000 of students that we would have to pay or maybe we receive. How many students is that? Because it looks about like half as many kids have chosen to leave Wilmington relative to last year. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Like it was, we had to pay $114,000 last year and 71, it's about half as many kids are choosing to stay in Wilmington. Is that the correct interpretation? Uh, try and get an answer for your question either Mr. Giro or Dr. Brand if you have any insight. Paul Ruggiero, Assistant Superintendent of Administration and Finance. Uh, the school choice line item is, I think, the cost of the town for students that choose to go to other districts that have school choice. If Wilmington had school choice, if we brought students in, we would receive, I think, a maximum of $5,000 per student. Okay, so wrong on the number, because that was the wrong one, but correct in interpreting it is we have a lot more students staying in Wilmington relative to last year. I think I got the clarity I needed. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion on total statutory charges. See none, we'll call for the vote. If you are in favor of total statutory charges in the amount of $10,922,027 as described by Mr. Doherty in his motion, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is customary at this time to thank the volunteers of the Finance Committee who sacrificed multiple nights per week from the end of January through mid-March and worked through town meetings scrutinizing the town manager's proposed budget so that they can make recommendations to the residents here at town meeting. Lastly, in this article, it's customary to thank the department heads who will be retiring in the upcoming year. Uh, George Hooper, the superintendent of public buildings, who has been employed by the town since August of 1987. <laughs> Not to be outdone, Tina Stewart, the director of the library, who has been employed by the town since July 15th, 1974. Don't go anywhere, Ms. Stewart. I suspect your name's going to be mentioned at some point later today. Uh, we are on to Article 6, folks, and that begins on page 13. Uh, Article 6, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds or borrow pursuant to any applicable statute, a sum of money for the purchase of equi and equipping <coughs> of new and or replacement capital equipment, including but not limited to the following items, including any incidental or related expenses, and further to authorize the sale, trade in, conveyance, or other disposition of any equipment being so replaced. Such funds to be spent by the town department so indicated <coughs> the approval of the town manager and to the extent set forth in Chapter 592 of the Acts of 1950, the Select Board. Uh, folks, it is customary to take up these item, items line by line. Uh, so I will divide this question accordingly, and I will note that the Finance Committee recommends approval of all the items of capital equipment listed in Article 6. I will refer, defer first to Select Board Member West on the issue of the police department purchase of four replacement police cruisers. Mr. West. Good morning, Mr. Moderator. I move that the $250,000 be raised and appropriated from available funds, free cash, of the town to be spent on the, by the town manager for the purchase and equipping of four replacement police vehicles for the police department, including all incidental and related expenses, and further the sale, trade-in, or other disposition if any of said replace vehicles is hereby authorized. Thank you, Mr. West. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? The motion has been made and seconded discussion. Um, hi, I'm Barb Bodwin, 1 Leonard Lane. Um, I wanted to sort of step back and just talk about this section more generally so I understood. Um, I had trouble finding the amounts here, so I was curious about why they weren't sort of listed um, in, in sort of the article as stated. And I'd like to understand sort of town planning around um, vehicle and equipment planning um, over time as sort of a general, like, is it done in each unit separately? Do we have a master plan like we do for facilities? How do we think about this? Because if um, information that I've found separately is correct, we're talking in this article about $900,000 investment. And I'd love to understand in totality how we think about uh, renewal in these spaces. All right, so I'm going to interpret that as two separate questions. One as to construction of, of this and really more generally other articles that do not contain the specific dollar figure. Uh, that is custom practice. So an article, the purpose of an article is to put residents on notice that an action may be taken to effectuate the stated purpose of the article. Um, it is common practice across the Commonwealth to not include in most instances, an actual dollar figure because the dollar figure oftentimes is not finalized at the time the warrant is finalized. So the motion is really the operative thing. We're not voting on articles, we're voting on motions on articles. So when Mr. West made a motion for $250,000 free cash to pay for those, those replacement police vehicles, that is the operative figure. Uh, oftentimes those figures are finalized by the time the public hearing comes up in, mid, in the middle of March. By the time the warrant happens a few weeks earlier, or the, by the time the warrant is finalized a few weeks earlier, th those numbers are, are still a bit of a work in progress. So this information could be found where? On the website? How do we understand this? In so the, this information is, is uh, usually discussed in, in detail at the public hearing that happens. It's joint with the Finance Committee and the Planning Board in the middle of March. But not released publicly, like online? Uh, it, it's a, a, a posted meeting that's available. WCTV is, is always broadcasted for as, as far back as I can think. Okay. Uh, and uh, Mr. Hull, if you want to speak to the issue of uh, any uh, planning for the um, I guess cycling of, of capital uh, vehicles. So uh, capital vehicles, along with all of our uh, capital projects, whether it's repairs to buildings or roads, uh, we have a five-year capital plan, uh, and departments uh, in uh, 
early uh, in the fall of 2022 in this case, are asked to review that uh, capital plan, make modifications to it. We, it's part of the budget discussion that happens. So uh, in the case of these vehicles, uh, it has been uh, customary practice to replace uh, certain uh, police cruisers uh, on an annual basis. Uh, these are just some of the uh, vehicles in the uh, police fleet, and that's done uh, in part because uh, the frontline vehicles are typically uh, high mileage vehicles, is high demand place on them, uh, a lot of idle time in, in the case of um, instances where they're uh, located at different places around town doing uh, traffic uh, monitoring or, or speed monitoring as well as obviously responding to emergencies. So uh, the police cruiser uh, line item has been a standard for many, many years, but more generally, uh, we do have a five-year plan to uh, look forward and try to uh, spread out the cost of our various capital investments. So just to follow up on that, um, you're saying that um, vehicles are replaced every year in terms of each vehicle is replaced every year or some of them are replaced regularly and we have a line item each year for some of the vehicles? Uh, some vehicles are replaced uh, each year, but not, not every single vehicle in every department is replaced each year. But clearly the premise is that to avoid a situation where we have an emergency need to replace multiple vehicles in one year, we're trying to spread them out over time. Great. Um, and I, I just want to sort of um, vocalize that the questions that I'm having um, are really around sort of um, resource allocation and how we think about investments sort of across our budget, because I know that, you know, I'm closer to conversations around school investment. And so I'm, I'm seeing sort of the scrutiny around some of the project base that are really required and needed right now based on the Wildwood being closed and, and how much scrutiny um, and conversation there was around that project. Um, you know, this actual, all of these vehicles are around the same amount, and I'm just curious about making sure that I understand um, that that scrutiny and that those conversations about how we allocate resources are happening in every space across um, a town's budget. So thank you. Uh, just for future reference, the capital improvement plan is uh, available on the town meeting web uh, webpage on the town's website. So uh, certainly avail yourself of that if you're, if you're curious about more on that topic. Further discussion for the purchase of four replacement police cruisers in the amount of $250,000 to come from free cash. Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. Uh, if you're in favor of $250,000 from free cash to purchase four replacement police cruisers, so indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed say no. Yay. Voted. Fire department for the purchase of one replacement fire prevention vehicle, Ms. Maselli. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> Excuse me. I move that $67,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the pur purchase, purchase and equipping of one fire prevention vehicle for the fire department, including all incidental and related expenses, and further, the sale, trade-in, or other disposition, if any, of said replaced vehicles by hereby authorized. Thank you, Ms. Maselli. That is the main motion. Is there a second? Motion is made and seconded discussion. Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. If you are in favor of $67,000 for the purchase of one replacement fire prevention vehicle, so indicate by saying aye. aye. <coughs> Opposed? <coughs> Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Department of Public Works for the purchase of one heavy duty three quarter ton pickup truck with plow to be assigned to the cemetery division. Mr. Ben Mr. Benville. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $65,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the purchase of a purpose of purchasing an equipment, equipping a heavy duty three quarter ton pickup truck with the plow for the DPW cemetery division, including in all incidental and related expenses and further the sale trade-in or other disposition, if any, of said replaced vehicles be hereby authorized. Thank you, Mr. Bendall. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? second. Motion is made in second. Discussion in the back. Mr. Toth. Uh, John Toth, 54 Fiorenza Drive, and Mr. Bendell may have touched on it, but um, the Department of Public Works, and I've looked through the past uh, seven years or so, has always purchased a, uh, 
a pickup truck uh, or every time it seems like there's a heavy dump truck being purchased every year. And the other ones in there, the school department, fire department, police department, all say replacement. Uh, they never say it's a replacement. And I don't know, are we developing a fleet of trucks or are, is there a replacement? And maybe Mr. Bendell has already touched on that. Uh, this is the uh, replacement of a 2010 Ford uh, F-250. So in, in the uh, overall thing, these are replacement. Yes. They're, they're typically, uh, this is, again, replacing vehicles, um, you know, as they age out, typically 10, 15 years, uh, depending upon the circumstances. The, we have a mechanics division that looks at <coughs> each of the vehicles, uh, whether it's a public works vehicle, a police cruiser, a fire vehicle, and makes an assessment as to uh, whether a particular vehicle uh, needs to be replaced. It could be any number of things. Uh, certainly safety issues come to the fore, uh, but sometimes the cost of repair uh, outweighs uh, the, the uh, value of keeping it. Okay, and I assume there may be some new ones being purchased that we didn't have before as well. There may be instances where uh, new equipment is purchased, yes, but the, predominantly we're replacing equipment as it ages out. Uh, I think it would be nice to show that on, in the warrant so that we know, is it a replacement or is it something new? Thank you. Further discussion on the heavy-duty three-quarter ton pickup truck with plow to be assigned to the cemetery division. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. If you are in favor of $65,000 to be spent for the purchase of a heavy-duty three-quarter ton pickup truck with plow to be assigned to the cemetery division, so indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Still on Department of Public Works for the purchase of one heavy-duty dump truck with a plow and swappable dump body, flatbed, and sander to be assigned to the highway division, Mr. Kyra. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $300,000 be raised and appropriated from available funds, free cash to be spent by the town manager for the purchase and equipping of one heavy-duty dump truck with plow and swappable dump body, flatbed, and sander for the Department of Public Works, highway division including all incidental and related expenses, and further, the sale trade in or other disposition, if any, of said replaced vehicle by uh, be hereby authorized. Thank you, Mr. Kyra. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? Motion is made and seconded. Discussion. Just name and address, oh, name and address for the record, please. Um, I'm Barb Bodwin from One Leonard, Leonard Lane. I'd be interested in, in similar information on this vehicle in terms of the age, if it's a replacement, um, and sort of what other vehicles serve this function in the town right now. All right, so Mr. Mr. Hall, on the questions of whether this is a replacement vehicle and then if we have any others capable of doing the same. Uh, this, is a, this is a replacement vehicle. Uh, it replaces a 2006 uh, six-wheel dump truck uh, this vehicle uh, is uh, a bit different than the vehicle it's replacing in that it actually has some measure of adaptability. There's the ability to change out uh, the dump body for a flatbed and a sander. So it's, it's a more versatile vehicle than just a conventional uh, dump truck. And follow-up question. Um, if this isn't um, approved, then what would be the plan for the town? Uh, what would be uh, you know, what would the town's plan be if, if this purchase were not approved? Uh, it's, if the if it's not approved, uh, we will continue to use the vehicle that we have to the extent that it can remain in service. I don't know uh, offhand uh, how long this the current vehicle can remain in service. I see the um, Mr. McGaldy wishes to speak as well. So. Good morning, Jamie Magaldi, Public Works Director. I can appreciate the question. This particular vehicle is a sterling dump truck. The parts are obsolete. We can no longer, no longer find replacement parts. Failure to purchase this vehicle would mean we would have to park it. Um, but before that, we would try to kind of keep it moving as far as we can. 
However, we would have to park it, most notably during a season of heavy, heavy use, like the snow season. This is one of our primary snow plow and sanders, and you would see an effect in the streets. And just one follow-up, if I may. Um, how many um, vehicles are related to um, plowing and snow in the fleet? Uh, overall, we have approximately 40 okay. vehicles um, plowing, and we have approximately six to seven salter vehicles. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote on the purchase of a heavy-duty dump truck with a plow and swappable dump body flatbed and sander to be assigned to the highway division in the amount of $300,000 to come from free cash. If you are in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Still in Dep the Department of Public Works for the purchase of one heavy-duty winged field mower to be assigned to the Parks and Grounds Division, Mr. De Palma. Microphone. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $142,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the purpose and purchase and equipment of one heavy-duty winged field mower for the Department of Public Works, Parks, and Grounds Division, including all incidentals related expenses and further the sale trade in or other disposition, if any, of said replacement vehicle be hereby authorized. Thank you, Mr. DePalma. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded discussion. Mr. Hall? Uh, just for a point of information, so this uh, particular mower uh, replaces a 2014 uh, mower. This is a critical part of the fleet because we have approximately 40 acres of athletic fields and parks that uh, this vehicle use, is used for. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Further discussion? Seeing on a call for the vote, if you're in favor of $142,000 for the purchase of one heavy-duty winged field mower to be assigned to the Parks and Ground Division, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Lastly, for the school department, for the purchase of one replacement handicap accessible wheelchair minivan, Mr. West. Mr. Moderator, I move that $76,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the purchase and equipping of one handicapped accessible wheelchair minivan for the school department, including all incidental and related expenses, and further the sale, trade-in, or other disposition of any of said replaced vehicles be hereby authorized. Thank you, Mr. West. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded discussion. Mr. Hall? Uh, again, just for uh, information, uh, this will replace a 2015 uh, minivan with approximately 113,000 miles on it, transports uh, school department students. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. If you are in favor of uh, $76,000 for the purchase of one replacement handicap accessible wheelchair minivan. So indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. All right, ladies and gentlemen, buckle up. <clears throat> Article 7. Article 7 was voted in the affirmative pursuant to the consent agenda, and the moderator will accept that vote of approval as the vote taken there wrong. Article 8. Article 8 was voted in the affirmative pursuant to the consent agenda, and the moderator will accept the vote of approval as the vote taken there wrong. Article 9. Article 9 was voted in the affirmative pursuant to the consent agenda, and the moderator will accept that vote of approval as the vote taken there wrong. Article 10. Article 10 was voted in the affirmative pursuant to the consent agenda, and the moderator will accept that vote of approval as the vote taken thereon. Article 11. Article 11 was voted in the affirmative pursuant to the, pursuant to the consent agenda, and the moderator will accept that vote of approval as the vote taken thereon. Article 12. Article 12 was voted in the affirmative pursu pursuant to the consent agenda, and the moderator will accept the vote of approval as the vote taken thereon. Article 13 was voted in the affirmative pursuant to the consent agenda, and the moderator will accept that vote of approval as the vote taken thereon. Article 14 for the sum of, uh, sum of money for the purchase of three cardiac monitors to be used by the fire department, Mr. Cairo. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I, uh, I will not read as fast as you. <laughs> I move that $180,000 be raised and appropriated from FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the purchase of three cardiac monitors to be used 
by the fire department, including any incidentals or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. Conner. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? second. Motion is made and seconded. Uh, Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 14. Discussion. <coughs> Seeing on a call for the vote, if you are in favor of $180,000 for, for the purchase of three cardiac monitors to be used by the fire department, so indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Article 15, which is for a sum of money for the Information Technology Department to continue the replacement of a voice over internet protocol VoIP phone systems at all municipal buildings and the public safety building. Mr. De Palma. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $54,000 <laughs> be raised and appropriated from FY24 tax levy and other general revenue of the town to be spent by the town manager for the Informational Technology Department to continue the replacement of the voice over internet protocol VoIP phone system at all municipal buildings and the public safety building, included any incidentals and related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. DePalmer. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? Second. second uh, motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 15. Mr. Toth. John Toth, 54 for Urenza Drive. Just a quick question. Uh, I think a couple of years ago this was identified as a three-year program. Is this the end of this replacement? Mr. Hall? Yes, it is. This is the third year of a three-year cycle. Thank you. Further discussion on Article 15. Seeing none, call for the vote. If you are in favor of $54,000 uh, for the uh, purchase of uh, the continued replacement of a voiceover internet protocol VoIP phone systems at all municipal buildings and the public safety building on Article 15, so indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Article 16. For a sum of money for the purchase of four mobile computers, antennas, and appropriate mounting to be installed in police vehicles slash cruisers. Mr. West. Mr. Moderator, I move that $50,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 <coughs> tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the purchase of four mobile computers, antennas, and appropriate mounting to be installed in police vehicles slash cruisers including any incidental or related expenses, cost of expenses. Thank you, Mr. West. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Motion has been made and second in discussion. Seeing none, a call for the vote. If you are in favor of $50,000 for the purchase of four mobile computers, antennas, and appropriate mounting to be installed in police vehicles slash cruisers, so indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Article 17. For a sum of money for the purchase of one stainless steel salter for the highway division, Mr. Uh, Ms. Maselli. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $36,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the purchase of one stainless steel, steel salter for the highway division, including any incidental or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Ms. Maselli. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? Okay. Motion is made and seconded. Discussion, Mr. Toth. John Toth, 54, for your engine drive. Just a quick question. I was wondering why this wasn't included under uh, the capital stuff that we mentioned before, since it's related to the highway division and the trucks and stuff. Uh, Mr. Hall? Uh, this, was, this is a uh, piece of equipment to be used on a truck, so it, it wasn't included as uh, in, in the other categories. So typically in Article 6, it's for the vehicles itself, where this is an attachment piece. Further discussion on Article 17. Seeing none, a call for the vote. On Article 17, if you are in favor of $36,000 for the purchase of one stainless steel salter for the highway division, so indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed say no. Aye. Voted. Article 18, which is for a sum of money for the purchase of one laser greater attachment for the highway division, Mr. Bendel. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $25,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for one laser grade attachment for the highway division, including any incidental or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. Bendel. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? The motion is made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 18. Discussion. Seeing none, a call for the vote on Article 18, which is for the amount of $25,000 for the purchase of one laser greater attachment for the highway division. If you are in favor of that amount, so indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. <coughs> Article 19, which is for a sum of money for the purchase of one leaf box attachment 
to be assigned to the Parks and Grounds Division. Mr. Cairo. Mr. Moderator, I move that $19,250 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the purchase of one leaf box attachment to be assigned to the Parks and Grounds Division, including any incidental and related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. Cairo. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. The Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 19 discussion. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote on Article 19, which is for a sum of money for the purchase of one leaf box attachment to be assigned to the Parks and Grounds Division. If you're in favor of that, the amount of $19,250. So indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Article 20, which is for a sum of money for the replacement of the existing playground at the Beltwell School, including design and engineering costs, site preparation and construction costs. Mr. De Palma. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $120,000 be raised and appropriated from FY24 tax levy and other general revenue of the town to be spent by the town manager for the replacement of the existing playground at the Botwell School, including design, engineering costs, site preparations, and construction costs, and any incidental and, excuse me, any incidental or related cost expenses. Thank you, Mr. DePalma. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 20 discussion. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Jennifer Minnelli, 17 Jacob Street. Um, I was just wondering if you could clarify the size of this structure in terms of the number of kids that it accommodates relative to the current structure and relative to the one that's being um, put in at the middle school for the Wildwood students. Mr. Hall. I would uh, defer to the Public Works Director, Jamie McGaldy. Uh, thank you for the question. This particular article refers to the replacement of the playground at the Boutwell, uh, which is designed to replace essentially the same climbing structure that's there now as far as size. That would be approximately 43 feet by 40 of a rectangle. Uh, that would be the area um, of protection around the climbing zone. The image that you see here is a concept plan that ideally would be the actual playground and it would accommodate approximately the same number of students at the Beltwell now. Uh, how does this size up to the playground at the middle school, which is designed to be a temporary playground? That playground is essentially about 28 feet wide by 34 feet long, which is a little bit smaller, uh, but that is designed to um, accommodate approximately the same size students as the Beltwell now. Great, um, and just one follow-up. Um, is that, how do I write, phrase this? Are we accommodating like all the kindergartners? Can all the kindergartners play or do we have to make some sacrifices on that? Was there a discussion of that when we came up with this plan? Uh, essentially, like I said, it's designed to accommodate the same number of students at the Boutwell. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the number of kindergarten students that would be at a particular recess at a time. And I'm not sure if the recesses are staggered, but if they are, um, it would essentially be the same as it is now. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Further discussion on Article 20? Ms. Wynn, is it? Um, Barb Bodwin, Wynn Leonard Lane. Oh, okay. um, just to follow up on that. So programmatically, um, when we have one recess, um, not all the kids are able to um, participate on this on the playground they they have to split it up right because that playground isn't sized for the number of students that are at any recess is that I'm not sure where I would direct that question is your, is your question um, whether the proposed replacement playground uh, would be sufficient for the present number of students that are using recess at any time no I'm not comparing to what we have now what my question is is do we have to make programmatic changes as we have in the past so that um, not all kids at one recess can use this um, playground because it's not large enough to accommodate the number of students at any given recess? Okay, so I'm gonna have to defer to the school department on uh, any programmatic changes that would need to take place or anticipated to take place uh, with uh, the possibility of a replacement playground at the Boutwell.
Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Glenn Brand, Superintendent of Schools. Uh, no, I, I don't, uh, r right now, uh, recess is, is staggered. Not all the same students, my understanding, are out at the same time. So from an accommodating standpoint, uh, that structure should suffice and still provide uh, equal access for students. Thank you. Further discussion on Article 20? Mr. Moderator, I would just note that this, uh, again, was in our capital plan. This was slated to be replaced. Uh, it replaces a 2001 structure uh, that, that it was, has been there, but some of the parts have been, uh, uh, had, had to be removed due to safety concerns and can no longer be replaced. So this, this was on the docket uh, well before the issues with the Wildwood School. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Further discussion on Article 20? See none will call for the vote if you are in favor of $120,000 for the replacement of the existing playground at the Boatwell School, including design and engineering costs, site preparation and construction costs. Again, this is Article 20. Please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Article 21, which is for a sum of money for engineering services to replace the high school turf field carpet, Mr. West. Mr. Moderator, I move that $40,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for our engineering services to replace the high school turf field carpet, including any incidental or related cost or expenses and expenses. Thank you, Mr. West. I'll accept that as a main motion on Article 21. Is there a second? second. Motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 21. Discussion, Ms. Sullivan. Suzanne Sullivan, 60 Lawrence Street. Um, in regards to this article, I really think that the town needs to consider moving away from turf fields. They're not good for our kids. Um, chewed up tires is a hazardous material. Even the city of Boston um, has banned any new turf fields in their city due to health concerns. It just doesn't seem logical to chew up hazardous waste, reuse it, and have our children playing on it. I will be in opposition to this article. I will be in opposition in the future if it comes up to spend any more money on turf fields in the town. We really need to move away from this. There's plenty of information out there. This town needs to educate itself on the hazards of turf fields. Thank you. Further discussion on Article 21, Mr. Toth. John Toth, 54 Fiorenza Drive. Uh, this says engineering services only, and it says the high school turf field carpet, but it didn't really say it was engineering services to put in a new turf field, or maybe it can replace with grass. I, I don't read it here. To, to see exactly what the services are providing. Mr. Hall, the uh, intent of, of the, this article? So the intent is to uh, provide engineering services associated with a new turf field. It would be developing the specifications so that in the subsequent year, uh, a bid could be issued for replacement uh, of the uh, turf field. Actually, it may not be in, in the next fiscal year just because of the timing of um, uh, the work. It may be in fiscal 26, but the plan would be for, for the article before you to uh, obtain engineering services to develop the particular specifications required to replace the existing turf field. Uh, when was this field put in? Uh, this was installed in October of 2013. Is this a typical length of time to go before replacement? Uh, the no? turf fields are recommended for replacement uh, between 10, 10 to 12 years from, from the time they're initially installed. Thank you. All right, further discussion on Article 21. Mr. McCaldy. Hi, Mike McCaldy, 5 Crystal Road. I uh, speak upon my, um, myself. Um, just a question on the engineering service. Could this service also take into consideration replacing with grass instead of the turf field? I do share the same concerns as the uh, previous commenter. Uh, I would do, uh, defer to the Public Works Superintendent. Uh, Jamie McGaldy, Public Works Director. 
The intent of this article was to provide engineering services to replace the carpet, uh, which when this was installed in 2013, there was a, um, a known that we would have to consider replacing this carpet at some point in the future. Uh, similarly, we did this with Yentile Field recently. The technology at Yentile is a little bit different in that there is a brock pad underneath that field, which will hopefully make it last a little bit longer. For anyone who has played on both of these fields, you can notice that the quality of turf at Yentiles is a little bit better. But to answer your question, the services that were intended for this were strictly to replace the wearing carpet. There is a potential that we can look at the material as far as either reusing the existing crumb rubber or getting rid of that and using a alternative substance for the fill. That has been d done recently at some other turf projects. For instance, the town of Bur uh, Bilrica just recently did a turf pr um, field over at one of their recreation fields, and they did not use crumb rubber. Um, but it was synthetic, so it was almost a mix there. So we will be looking at options there, but the primary intent of this article would be to replace the turf. I see further discussion on Article 21. Barb Bodwin, One London Lane. Uh, just a follow-up question on that. Um, is there opportunity to expand the scope of the engineering services to look at um, replacement, like um, options between replacing turf and replacing grass um, and building that into the scope so that we have more information in terms of the next decision that's coming down in, uh, in a financial, significant financial investment in um, replacing the turf? Uh, I'm interpreting your, your question as one of um, a, a point of order to, to um, see whether or not a motion to amend would be appropriate. Uh, and if, yes, that would certainly be within the scope of Article 21. So if you're seeking to amend it to explore the possibility of, of using some alternative to field turf, uh, then yes, that would be within the scope. I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> Is that what okay. I say? <laughs> I will need to see that in writing. Uh, and it could simply be just be to add the words and however you want to phrase it. Um, At this time, I do want to acknowledge the presence of our state representative, uh, Dave Robertson. Thank you. Just sign it too, please. Can you just sign it too? Sorry. All right, so the motion to amend, uh, to expand the scope of the engineering services, to expand, to include the exploration of options between replacing 
uh, the field with turf or grass. So there's a motion on the floor uh, to amend uh, the motion on Article 21 uh, to expand the scope of the engineering services to include the exploration of options between replacing the field with turf or with grass. Is there a second on the motion to amend? The motion has been made and seconded. Discussion. Just discussing the amendment as to whether or not we're expanding the scope of the engineering services, Ms. Sullivan. Um, I obviously will move to, um, to amend. Um, I really urge everybody in the town to really um, take a look at this. Um, you know, it's our let kids' me, help. Can I interject, Ms. Sullivan? You said you're moving to amend. Are you moving to further amend, or are you no, 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 no. I'm just speaking okay. on the amendment and okay. approval of the amendment. And I, um, there's other alternatives to this. Other besides um, synthetic. There's also coconut chips. There's a whole lot of other things that the town could investigate um, when doing this. And I, I hope that they will beyond even the turf. But um, if it's going to be grass, or if it's going to be synthetic. But uh, it just doesn't make sense, in, in my opinion, to have children running around on hazardous waste. It's good to reuse uh, tires, just I don't think it should be reused to have our children playing on it. Um, it's not good. And I hope that everybody stands up in um, favor of this amendment. It doesn't hurt to take a look anyways. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion to amend, Mr. Hall? I would just uh, suggest that you know the the, uh, the implication that the town has created a environment, uh, a hazardous waste environment uh, for for kids to play on is simply not true. Um, you know the suggestion that 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 we have two turf fields that are hazardous for. Uh, kids to play on and we have knowingly done that you know I take strong exception to further discussion on the motion to amend I see none will call for a vote if you are in favor of amending the motion on article 21 to expand the scope of the engineering services to ex include the exploration of options between replacing the field with turf or with grass uh, we'll do this by a voice vote if we can so if you are in favor of that motion to amend, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. If you're opposed, say no. no. Uh, the measure passes. So we're back on discussion on the amended main motion. Uh, let me just bring up everything we got here, folks. Please just give me a second. Is there further discussion before I restate uh, the now amended motion? Seeing none, so I'm going to ask for a vote if you are in favor of $40,000 to be raised and appropriated from the fiscal 24 tax levy and other general revenue revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for engineering services um, uh, to include the exploration of options between replacing the field with turf or with grass uh, at the high school uh, the high school field. Uh, so indicate by saying aye. aye. If you're opposed, say no. Aye. Voted. We're on Article 22, which is for a sum of money to resurface the existing tennis courts at the Butwell School, including design and engineering costs, site preparation and construction costs. Ms. Maselli. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $40,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager to resurface the existing tennis courts at the Butwell School, including design and engineering costs, site preparation and construction costs, and any incidental or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Ms. Maselli. A motion is made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 22. Discussion. Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. If you are in favor of $40,000 to resurface the existing tennis courts at the Boatwell School, including design and engineering costs, site preparation and construction costs, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Article 23, which, for, which is for a sum of money to replace the 320 feet, more or less, of exist for, the existing four-foot high chain link fence between 175 and 171 Middlesex Avenue at the Wilmington Memorial Library's southwest property line. Mr. Bendel. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. 
I move that $20,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager to replace 320 feet, more or less, of existing four-foot-high chain-link fence between 175 and 171 Middlesex Avenue at the Wilmington Memorial Library Southwest property line, including any incidental or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. Bendel. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 23 discussion. Mr. Melarogny. Uh, Paul Melarogny, 176 Middlesex Ave. I had inquired uh, either last year or the year before uh, about the replacement of this fence, and I was told that it was owned by the uh, resident next door to the library, the old Kane House. Is, is that, who owns the fence, actually? Mr. Hall or Mr. McGaldy? The uh, town owns the fence. Okay. Further discussion on Article 23. Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. If you are in favor of $20,000 to replace the 320 feet, more or less, <coughs> of the existing four-foot-high chain-link fence between 175 and 171 Middlesex Avenue at the Wilmington Memorial Library Southwest property line. Uh, again, this is Article 23. If you are in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Article 24, which is for a sum of money for the continued phased cemetery development. Mr. Kyra. Mr. Moderator, I move that $80,000 be raised and appropriated from FY24 tax levy or other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the phased cemetery development, including any incidentals or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. Kyra. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? second. Motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 24 discussion. Ms. Sullivan. Suzanne Sullivan, 60 Lawrence Street. I just had a, a quick question. Um, are there any trees included in this budget and for the cemetery? Because um, there's been a lot of dieback of trees. I mean, the trees look like they need some help. And it'd be really nice if we could plant more trees in the cemetery. And I know um, Jamie's awesome about trees. So I'm just wondering if there's any trees in the budget here. Mr. McGaldy. Uh, thanks, Ms. Sullivan. The budget is general so that we can use it for tree some trees if we need to. Primarily, it's focused on the new Section Q, where the existing 64 Wildwood Street uh, once resided. Um, but as you know, with that plan, we do have trees included. The problem with planting trees in the existing cemetery is there's um, very little space left to do that that are, are already occupied by graves. But um, Generally speaking, when we do get funds, we can channel them down to the cemetery as we have been to do replacements. Further discussion on Article 24. Seeing none, I'm going to call for the vote. If you are in favor of $80,000 for the continued phased cemetery development on Article 24, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Article 25, which is to raise an appropriate or transfer from department receipts or user fees, a sum of money to operate the Department of Public Works Sewer Division Enterprise, Mr. De Palma. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $3,672,484 be appropriated from the department's receipts to be spent by the town manager for the purpose of operating the Department of Public Works Sewer Division Enterprise. Thank you, Mr. De Palma. I will accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 25, discussion. Hi, uh, Alan Sawinski, 8 Fiorenza Drive. Exactly what is the Public Works Sewer Division Enterprise? Is that a scheme where the receipts from sewer you charges saw? go to finance it? Or I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, a few years ago, the town meeting authorized the establishment of an enterprise uh, account. So the revenue that is generated uh, for, from those companies and households uh, that are tied to sewer, that revenue comes back into this account as opposed to going into the town's general fund. And then funds are drawn from that account to pay for the operations. Further discussion on Article 25. Seeing none, I'm going to call for the vote. If you are in favor of 3,672,484, the operation of the Department of Public Works Sewer Division Enterprise on Article 25, so indicate by saying aye. aye. 
Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Article 26, which is for a sum of money for a replacement pump at the Pilcher Drive pump station, including design and engineering costs, Mr. West. Mr. Moderator, I move that $30,000 be raised and appropriated from Sewer Enterprise Fund to be spent by the town manager for a replacement pump at Pilcher Drive pump station, including design and engineering costs, any incidental or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. West. <coughs> I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 26, discussion. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. If you are in favor of $30,000 for a replacement pump at the Pilcher Drive pump station, including design and engineering costs. Again, this is Article 26, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Article 27, which is for a sum of money for the replacement of approximately 19,124 square feet of roofing at the West Intermediate School, including design and engineering costs, site preparation and construction costs. Ms. Maselli. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $550,000 be raised and appropriated from the Capital Stabilization Fund of the town to be spent by the town manager for the rep replacement of approximately 19,124 square feet of roofing at the West Intermediate School, including design and engineering costs, site preparation and construction costs, and any incidental or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Ms. Maselli. I will accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? Motion has been made and second. And Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 27, discussion. Ms. Sullivan. Suzanne Sullivan, 60 Long Street. My only question, comment is, can the roof not be black and maybe white? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hall or Mr. Magaldi? I would defer to the public, work, public building superintendent. Yeah, we could take a look at that. Um, but I will say that uh, originally, the white roofs, uh, uh, typically uh, southern states in this country, uh, we use the black ones here. And one of the main reasons, because of the snow loads, the uh, sun does help us with the, the black. It does diminish that. And uh, so we can take a look at it, you know, but uh, it can be included in this cost. Further discussion on Article 27. Seeing none, we're going to call for the vote. If you are in favor of $550,000 to come from capital stabilization on Article 27 for the replacement of approximately 19,124 square feet of roofing at the West Intermediate Schools, school including design and engineering costs, site preparation and construction costs, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Article 28, which is for a sum of money for the design phase to replace windows and exterior doors at the West Intermediate School, Mr. Bendel. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $170,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the design phase to replace windows and exterior doors at the West Intermediate School, including any incidental or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. Bendel. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? The motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 28, discussion. Um, Kevin McDonald, 140 Innova Street. Um, I realize that this is relative to public buildings, and I'd like to just ask um, uh, one of the gentlemen on the Finance Committee a question, if that's okay, Mr. Moderator. You can ask your question to me. I will frame it to whoever person I feel is best suited to answer your question. Okay. I believe it was last year that I think a sum of like $800,000 was appropriated to replace boilers at the Woburn Street School. And I was watching a finance committee meeting. Uh, Mr. Hooper addressed them, and he stated that um, they should be able to keep the boilers going, and they Mr. Mr. McDonald, I, I want to be clear that we're constraining our comments to the scope of Article 28, which is for the design phase to replace yes, windows and exterior that. doors at the West Intermediate School. Th thank you for. Um, uh, reiterating that I already didn't know that and the purpose for my comments and my purpose for rising today is because um, I thought it would be fair to let the folks here know that there was a large amount of money appropriated for boilers at the Woburn Street and I'm just feeling as though since that money is not being spent and if we're looking to um, raise money or um, this is a simple question to the Finance Committee. 
yes or no question, is it correct that a large sum of money was appropriated for boilers at the Woburn Street School? Mr. Mr. McDonald, we're, can, we're not going to entertain motions or, or questions on articles that were uh, the subject of previous uh, meetings. It's my motivation to try to use that money instead of taxing people again when that money wasn't spent. Mr. McDonald, the, is that the possible? Vote, votes authorize the expenditure of funny, monies. They don't uh, obligate the town to spend any money. So the, the town will be authorized under Article 26, uh, 28 rather, to spend under the motion that has been presented $170,000 for the replacement, or I'm sorry, for the design phase to replace windows and exterior doors at the West Intermediate School. And that is the extent to which they, they um, that would authorize the town to do. Okay, it I don't have a problem with that, Mr. Moderator. So. I don't have a problem with that. I just rise to amend the article to say that um, this money be taken from free cash since I believe the money from the Woven Street School uh, boilers was put into free cash. So I'd like to just amend that uh, so that the money for this right, here comes from free cash. Mr. McDonald, I'm interpreting your comment as a motion to amend the funding source from the fiscal 24 tax revenues or tax levy to free cash. Is that? That's correct. Okay, is there a second? All right, your motion fails for lack of a second. We're back on discussion on Article 28. Seeing no further discussion on Article 28, if you are in favor of $170,000 to come from the tax levy for the design phase to replace windows and exterior doors at the West Intermediate School, again, this is Article 28, and the Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 28. So indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Article 29, which is for a sum of money for the design phase and replacement or restoration of historical windows at the Harndon Tavern Museum, Mr. Cairo. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $115,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the design phase and replacement or restoration of historical windows at the Harndon Tavern Museum, including any incidental or related cost and expenses. Thank you, Mr. Kyra. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? second. Motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 29, discussion. Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. If you are in favor of $115,000 for the design phase and replacement or restoration of historical windows at the Hundred Tavern Museum. Uh, again, this is Article 29. If you are in favor of, of that sum of money, so indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, say no. no. Voted. Article 30, which is for a sum of money for the design and replacement of roofing at the Harndon Tavern Museum Carriage House, including construction costs. Mr. De Palma. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $60,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the design and replacement of the roof, roofing at the Harndon Tavern Museum Carriage House, including construction costs and any incidental and, or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. De Palma. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? Motion is made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 30. Discussion. Barb Bodwin, um, One Leonard Lane. My question is about sort of the relativity of the cost of this roof versus um, the west and sort of um, why, why it is quite so much. Yeah, I'm gonna to defer to Mr. Hooper on the, on the cost of, um, of the replacement of the roofing at the 100 Tavern Museum Carriage House. Uh, compared to the West, do you say? Yeah. All right, so the West Intermediate roof is a 19,000 square feet of EPTM rubber roofing mm -hmm. uh, with insulation underneath. This here is 2,800 square feet of three tab asphalt shingles. So they will strip that roof off, make sure the uh, boards underneath are in good condition, uh, and then put an underlayment. So uh, it's apples and oranges. Well, I'm just more thinking about like a residential house, which it's more comparable to, and 60,000 wouldn't be sort of how much it would take to, for me to sort of do that. Is it that there's, we're anticipating a lot underneath in terms of board replacement? No, when you do your house, you go out and you solicit bids. Uh, when we do a public project like this, we have to use a prevailing wage, which is a slightly different. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Further discussion on Article 30 in the back? Yes, um, with regard to bidding, 
Um, I was looking at the town website, and one of the things that I noticed was, um, I'll, I'll use for example the um, Wilmington Housing Authority is putting out bids for Deming Way, and I noticed that they're no longer accepting sealed bids, that all the bids are electronic. And so, so that Mr. McDonald, the, the process through which bids are released is outside of the scope of Article 30, which deals only with the replacement of roofing at the Hunt and Tavern Museum character. Will, will the replacement of the roofing be bid out? I, I believe. Yes, it will. Yes. So is that outside the scope of the article if it's going to be bid out? It is outside of the scope to dictate the method through which bidding is occurring on that. Okay. I just had a little problem with that because uh, there's been electronic fraud, but be that as it may. Um, this is another article that's a public building. Mm -hmm. And since um, there's been a lot of money that was um, taxed to people and put into free cash, and since we're asking people to be uh, taxed for replacing this, I'd like this uh, sum of money to be um, raised, uh, not through taxation, but through the over-budgeted amounts for right. past Mr. public Mr. McDonald, we, we've been through this dance before. Uh, I'm not going to tolerate any incendiary marks as, as such as over-budgeting. Uh, if, if you're disagreeing with something, that's fine, and you, you're welcome to come and be heard and voice your opinion on this. But Can I ask a question then? Go ahead, Mr. McDonald. Has any money that's been generated into free cash Mr. from McDonald, last is it, year's you, is budget you, is been your due to discussion over budgeted amounts? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. McDonald, your comments need to be constrained to the scope of the article then under discussion. We're talking yes. about the possibility of a replacement of the roof at the Hundred Tavern Carriage House. That's correct. I understand your that. Your question and your commentary. I can see the picture the right there. That's the, that's the Hardin Tavern carriage house right yeah. behind you. So I know that we're on that article. So I, you didn't. don't need to tell me that because I can read Mr. it. Mr. McDonald, I, I'm asking that you constrain your commentary to the scope of the article projected behind And that's behind exactly it. what I want to do because we're looking to raise money through taxing all these people and the people who couldn't make it here because they're out working. And so I'm just simply asking for an amendment a second to the motion so it can go forward. Maybe some other people would like to discuss it, but I'd like to put forth an amendment that the money be raised, not through taxation, but through free cash, which was obtained through over budget. Oh, Mr. McDonald, I'm going to interpret your comments as a motion to amend the funding source on Article 30 to be uh, to strike the reference to the fiscal 24 tax levy and replace it with free cash. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. Mr. McDonald, I'm going to need to see that motion to amend in writing. Motion. You don't need to, you're just changing the funding source. You don't even need to reference the amount. You're just changing the funding source. Okay. No, no. We'll see if we can go out of here. Okay. All right, so we have a uh, motion to do amend. It's currently under discussion. Uh, discussion is uh, relative to the funding source that will be used. The motion to amend would replace uh, the, the funding source and the main motion, which is the fiscal 24 tax levy, uh, with free cash. Uh, Ms. Toth. This is not on the amendment? This is, on, this is discussion on the amendment. Well, then I have it on get, the original. I'll catch you later. OK. <laughs> Further discussion on the motion to amend? Yes, I think it would be fair, Mr. Moderator, to have the um, Finance Committee address the body here today just to let people know how much was put into free cash from last year's budget. I, I'll ask the members of the Finance Committee if you care to chime in as to your uh, recommendation to the town on the, uh, the motion to amend now before the floor. 
So would you recommend, and again, you're not having time to meet collectively as a group, but if you care to express your opinion on whether or not uh, the funding source on Article 30 should be amended. Uh, Ms. Galeza. No. <laughs> that wasn't no. like, Mr. Moderator? Mr. Mr. McDonald, again, discussion runs through the, the moderator. I'm addressing the town you. meeting. I'm asking you're, you. You're, if your uh, commentary and your question was at all within the scope of the motion to amend, it was relative specific to your motion to amend the funding source. That's correct. So on the merits of that motion, I'm asking the Finance Committee if they care to, ex to make a recommendation, which is their charge, to the Assembly. I um, would Mr. recommend Moderator, no. point of order. I believe my question was not to ask them if they support it, but ask them what the amount of free cash was that was generated into free cash from the last year's budget. That's well outside of the scope of your motion to amend, Mr. McDonald. Your My motion to amend merely changes the funding source for $60,000. Um, We're not talking about the entire budget. We're not talking about the entire free cash amount. We're talking about whether or not to change the funding source. And three members of the Finance Committee have made a recommendation to the Assembly, which is the purpose of the Finance Committee. We're going to go to further discussion in the back. Ms. Telfer. Again. Is this on his amendment or is this on... This, we're still on the amendment. We're going to okay. vote on the amendment. Uh, and then mm -hmm. uh, once that, that vote is uh, made, we'll go back to discussion under the main motion, whether amended or not. Hi, uh, Ms. Barb Bowden. Bowden, one Leonard Lane. Um, I'm, I'm curious about um, the conversation, but in order to vote on this amendment, I don't feel prepared in terms of understanding the implications for, you know, if we take it from this pot versus the, the other. Um, so I'd love to hear sort of, I would love to hear from the Finance Committee about sort of um, what what the plans are for free crash and how something like this would impact um, those plans that we already have for this year. Uh, well, Finance Committee or Mr. Hall, if you care to uh, address the general plan uh, or um, perhaps the, the rationale behind uh, the motion to take this originally with uh, from the tax levy. Uh, typically projects uh, that are of a, a smaller uh, budget are uh, taken from the tax levy. Uh, free cash, the purpose of free cash in, in part is to fund uh, larger projects, uh, w whether they're large building projects, uh, any number of projects that uh, cost several hundred thousand dollars. Uh, we also uh, look to have a free cash balance in order to uh, serve as a safety net because there have been years, believe it or not, when uh, the town's revenue stream has been stressed with the, with the economy uh, in decline. And so there have been years historically where the town has had to resort to the use of free cash uh, to keep services uh, going to avoid uh, service cuts. And so those are a couple of reasons why we want to have uh, free cash available. Further discussion Mr. on the Moderate? motion to amend. Mr. Mr. McDonald, you're permitted to speak once on discussion I just on had a motion question. to amend. You, a you already spoke on under discussion on your motion to amend and our inhabitant so bylaws require. Ask your question? Okay. <laughs> Further discussion on the motion to amend. Uh, Alan Swinsky, 8 Fiorenzo Drive. When it says available funds, does that mean it's got to be from fiscal 24, or is there a possibility it could come from free cash? Mr. Holland, the definition of available funds. Uh, available funds in include free cash. Uh, to your question, is it, I, as I understand your question was, could it come from free cash or could it come from the fiscal 24 tax levy? It, it could come from either. All right, sir, can you just approach the microphone? I, I want to make sure conversation's not going. Okay. Uh, so it would be a judgment call where to take it from. Is that correct? Or do you free cash are available funds? The, the motion to amend that's presently under discussion would be to take it from free cash. Right. But the, part where the way it's written, it could be fiscal 24 receipts or free cash, right? No, the, the motion that was... Not the motion as written. The, the main motion, which is under discussion to be amended uh, was to take it from the, the fiscal 24 tax levy. And the motion to amend would be to change it from the tax levy to free cash. Well, I thought the town manager just said available funds could possibility of either. 
as available funds is kind of gen general. I think he did say that. It's for, for uh, from the fiscal 24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town. So I, I think there's some confusion here. As I understood it, sir, your question was could this project be funded from uh, the tax levy or from free cash? And my response to that is that is a judgment call and that either could happen. As I understand it, the motion on the floor is to take the funds from free cash. No. And, and that is if, if the board, if the body uh, decides to go that route, then that to adopt that amendment, then there would be a main motion to consider. So if I could address kind of the procedural uh, mechanism, and, and this actually ties on an earlier question as to whether or not dollar figures would, should be included within the actual text of an article. You'll see that many of the, the, uh, the, the language within articles will begin with to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate comma, transfer from available funds, or borrow pursuant to any applicable statute, and then it goes on to a sum of money. The article itself lends out a couple options that the town, the town meeting could choose from uh, that would be identified in the main motion uh, for how something is going to be paid. So the main motion was through the tax levy, which is within one of those options presided, or that, that is included within the text of the article. Uh, the maker of the motion to amend is seeking to change that from one to the other. Not seen any further discussion on the motion to amend from someone who has not yet spoken on the motion to amend, uh, so I will call for a vote. Again, this is a vote on the motion to amend to change the funding source on the main motion from uh, the tax, uh, fiscal 24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to free cash funds. If you are in favor of the motion to amend, again, this is not on article, this is not on the main motion on article 30, this is just on whether to change the funding source. If you're in favor of that uh, motion to amend, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. If you're opposed, say no. No. The no's are gonna have it, so the motion fails. We're back on main, uh, on discussion on the main motion on article 30, which is $60,000 to come from the tax levy for the design and replacement of roofing at the Harndon Tavern Museum Carriage House. Ms. Toth, you've been very patient with us. Linda Toth, 54 Fiorenza Drive. Question I have on the design. Are you looking for, and I, this might be, I might be out of order, but are they looking for a specific shingle that would have been put on at that time? Are we going to just get plain shingling on that, on the roof here and on the Harden? Um, so that it, it can cut down the cost or are they going to be designer shingles that would cost $60,000 per roof? So they're not designer shingles. Uh, we'll be going through and looking at it. We're going to have a, a, an engineer that's okay. going to put together a scope of work for this. Uh, it's going to uh, design the entire job as far as if we have to do rake boards or any soffit replacement also as we go through. But uh, most likely it's going to be an asphalt shingle. We will look at that design when it comes up. Okay. And it'll either be three tab or architectural, but most likely it'll be a 40 year shingle. Uh, it's not gonna be similar to what's on the uh, tab main house. This one here, uh, it has, like I said, the three tab um, asphalt shingles currently. So the design is for everything is to make sure that all the studs or whatever needs to be replaced that right. could be rotted, that is included in the $60,000. It's an in-depth design. We'll go through to make sure everything's okay. completed in the building. So that before, so I don't come up and ask about the next one. That could pertain to the next article as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion, Mr. McDonald. Yes, Mr. Martha, through, through you for a, a question for Mr. Hooper. Um, is it correct that this place is registered as a certified historical um, landmark? Mr. Hooper, to any, any uh, uh, consideration given any historical status? As far as this building? particular building, uh, I defer it to anybody from the Historical Commission on this. Paul 
Bonnie Smith, 30 uh, Marion Street, and I'm the chair of the Historical Commission, and the, uh, the house is, in fact, on the National Register. And just to be clear, that, that does not include, the, does that include the carriage house or not? I'm really not sure, and I apologize that I don't know that, but I know the house is on Historical Register. I didn't um, believe so, so I just want a clarification. For the, the reason for my question is, <clears throat> back in like the 1700s, they didn't have asphalt shingles, and they had things that were conducive to historical um, architecture at the time. So maybe um, the gentle lady here could answer the question. Um, if they've reached out to um, historical funding societies or anything like that to seek funds from them rather than the, uh, the taxpayers. Uh, I'm going to defer actually to Mr. Hull to see whether or not uh, such funds are deemed to be accessible uh, to the town uh, for that or, or uh, would be likely to be granted. Uh, there are funds available through Mass Historical. I'm not aware that they're um, available for um, replacing of roofs, but um, there has not been a... Uh, uh, a request from two mass historical for this type of work. So just to clarify that, Mr. Moderator, so Mr. Hull has not reached out to them and requested them to Mr. see if this funds available? You got your answer. The answer was... I, I, I misunderstood it. I just want a clarification. I think the answer to his question, was, your question was yes. He did reach out and there's no funds? No. Because that's not what I heard. He, what he just said was, Mr. Hull just said was that uh, he, he is not... Uh, attempted to secure outside funding for this okay. project. Okay, and just the last question. Um, uh, uh, is there a private vehicle somebody storing their private um, items in that building? Uh, Mr. McDonald, that's outside of the scope. We're talking about the roof, not what's inside the house. Okay. Further discussion on Article 31? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll call, we're going to call for the vote. If you are in favor of $98,000 for the design engineering and replacement of roofing at the... I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. All right. If we are, in, if you are in favor of sixty thousand dollars for the design and replacement of roofing at the Harden Tavern Museum Carriage House, including construction costs on Article Thirty, so indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Now we are on to Article Thirty One which is for a sum of money for the design, engineering, and replacement of roofing at the Harnton Tavern, including construction costs, Mr. West. Mr. Moderator, I move that $98,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the town manager for the design, engineering, and replacement of roofing at the Harnton Tavern including construction costs and any incidental or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. West. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? second. Motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 31 discussion. Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. If you are in favor of $98,000 for the design, engineering, and replacement of roofing at the Hondren Tavern, including construction costs. Again, this is Article 31. $98,000 if you are in favor. So we'll indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Article 32, which is for a sum of money to renovate sections of the Wilmington Middle School to accommodate the relocation of Wildwood Early Childhood Center staff and students, and for relocation costs and furnishings and equipment, including design and engineering costs, site preparation and construction costs, Mr. Ragsdale. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $545,359 be raised and appropriated from available funds, free cash, to be spent by the town manager to renovate sections of the Wilmington Middle School to accommodate the relocation of Wildwood Early Childhood Center staff and students and for relocation costs and furnishings and equipment including design and engineering costs, site preparation and construction costs, and any incidental or related costs and expenses including any incidental or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. Ragsdale. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 32. Further discussion? Wow. I don't look any better in the bright lights. So why, don't we, why don't we either get our sunglasses out or... Uh, I'm 
I, I, Me? If I can see you, then yes, okay. Ms. Benelli in the back. <laughs> Jennifer Benelli, 17 Jacob Street. Um, you said the number was $545,000? $545,359. Okay. Um, so the original number recommended by the committee and the professional that was hired to um, assess this situation was $1.1 million. And I understand that a portion of that, like the $120,000 has been taken out of elsewhere, which would be about a million dollars if we were working off the budget that the percent the professional we, the town hired recommended. Um, so can you please explain the difference between 900 or a hundred thousand or a million dollars and 545,000? Are we getting the exact same thing for 50% off? Are we cutting things out? What's going on here? Okay, so I'm gonna defer first to Mr. Holland, possibly to Dr. Brand after that uh, for an explanation of uh, the figure. Uh, there is a, a change in the scope of work. So the uh, project that was uh, proposed at 1.1 million, uh, as was noted, there was 100,000 in there for a playground, which is now being uh, taken care of through another funding source. Uh, also, there was uh, a much uh, more significant uh, proposal for change out of rooms, in this case, uh, the 545,000 and change uh, contemplates the a change of a, an office uh, space uh, located off of the library uh, to restrooms for uh, male, female restrooms for the pre-K and K students and all the associated uh, plumbing uh, with regard to that. So it's a, a smaller scope. Uh, there were discussions that uh, took place uh, between the uh, chair of the select board, the chair of the school committee, the superintendent, and myself, and there was agreement that, um, that this scope of work would, would work. Uh, we've worked with our, uh, the, the same firm that was recommending the larger scope, uh, Doran Whittier, and they've designed uh, this uh, project uh, for this amount of money. Um, is this current scope the one that was presented at the Wildwood Building School Committee me or Wildwood mm -hmm. School Building Committee meeting in um, March? Is that the plan, or is the plan changed since that March presentation to the public? The March uh, Finance Committee meeting. I, I'm no, the Wildwood at the Wildwood Buildings. <laughs> at the Wildwood Building. Meeting, committee meeting, they presented what the scope would look like to the public. That the design of Doran Whittier and the public was able to see what that would be and understand um, how that related to the original budget created in December. Is the budget, is the $545,000 going to give us that plan that was given to us in March or have, does, have we cut things out since that meeting? I would uh, ask perhaps the superintendent to um, comment on that. I, I don't recall specifically whether the last Wildwood School Building Committee, uh, whether the scope that we are talking about here was uh, discussed at that meeting. Mr. Moderator. Please. Uh, Glenn Brand, Superintendent of Schools. So uh, I'm myself trying to think back to that last meeting. We've had an awful lot of meetings around this project lately for sure, but I. So I don't, recall, I don't recall exactly if this plan was showcased at that meeting. However, what I will say is that uh, the plan has not changed on its face in the sense of uh, still providing construction, of which in a forthcoming report I'll speak to, still providing construction for uh, bathrooms to serve the younger population. Uh, the change is in a different location of the wing of the middle school building. Uh, but still on its face, the same uh, overarching plan and all other aspects related uh, to that plan remain the same. Can we show the plan that we're voting on and how that differs from the $1 million or 900000 depending on how you do the math version? Mr. Hall. Uh, I was just going to note that certainly this was discussed at the Finance Committee public hearing, which was held back in, in March, and so any any... There was an opportunity at that time to uh, hear about the plan, but in terms of the actual design plans, we, I don't have them here. Aren't, aren't they on the website in the public? 
as they were presented at a public meeting? I mean, we're talking about half the cost. <laughs> so I think we just need a little bit more detail on why it's half the cost that the, the original plan was. 200,000 is we Ms. took Ms. it out of somewhere else. What about the other? I, I'm going to defer to Ms. Galezzo on the Finance Committee. Mr. Moderator, can I have Dr. Brand um, discuss this if this is satisfactory to the school, the current plan with this budget? Dr. Brand. Thank you, Ms. Roderator. Uh, so, so, Ms. Galezzo, could you, sorry, repeat your question one I think more the, time, the please. question is whether or not the, the motion as presented uh, for the $545,359 Thank you. Uh, is acceptable to the school department. Uh, it is. Um, we have uh, worked in partnership with uh, the town manager uh, and uh, Doran Whittier, the consultant firm, who has been with us every step of the way. Uh, this shift, I think it's important to point out, uh, Mr. Hull may speak to this a little bit more, uh, the shift in the number in a downward sense, in a better sense, still provides uh, all elements of this plan uh, that has been presented publicly, whether it be to the Finance Committee, uh, whether it be to the School Committee, whether it be within the Wildwood Building Committee. So uh, I absolutely can say that uh, we're very comfortable with these numbers. They, are, they came in lower than what was anticipated and what was being carried for the project. That's a great thing, of course, for the residents, but it remains true to the overall plan that has been presented publicly, and I was very much in support of that. Thank you, Dr. Brand. Ms. Uh, Manganelli. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to ask if the school committee voted on this plan. Uh, to uh, Vice Chair Ragsdale, uh, to, to speak to any um, discussions the school committee had relative to Article 32. Uh, the, this plan was presented to the school committee. Uh, I don't recall if we actually took a vote on the current form of it. I mean, we, we voted on the broader plan to relocate Wildwood to the middle school, um, but I think that the specific details of what the you know, architectural plans were, that was, that's a level of implementation that was, was not presented to us specifically. Um, but uh, if I may continue just to speak to the issue, uh, one of the reasons that the cost was able to uh, come down was that the revised plan was able to locate bathrooms in a place where there already was plumbing, or essentially next to other bathrooms. So uh, rather than having to just construct bathrooms essentially from scratch, which was part of the original thought and idea. So that's part of why the cost was able to come down so much. And then in addition, uh, those were ideas, you know, before we put anything out to bid, um, we wanted to make sure we had the necessary money in order to, you know, cover the project. Uh, but now that we have actually, you know, gotten more information on, um, on what the cost will be, the number has fortunately been able to come down. Um, but we believe that this will cover exactly what we need for this project and, um, and is not compromising the project from what was originally intended. Okay, I'm going to go to Mr. McDonald and then Ms. Plowman and back to you, Ms. Benelli. Just a, a few questions, Mr. Moderator. Can you tell us how many students are actually enrolled at the um, Early Education Center? At the, you're at the Wildwood? I, I'm, just, I'm trying to get a, a uh, well, sense we'll, of what your question is. We're looking to relocate is. them. And then, how many uh, students have to be relocated? Is that your question? How many students have been relocated? And what's the average uh, enrollment in the Early, edu early Childhood Education Center? Does not, anybody have that number? I'm not quite sure what average enrollment um, entails. Like for three years, if there's like um, maybe 50, 100, 150, um, you take the three, you add them up together, and you divide it by three, and that's the average? So the, the average number of students enrolled at the Wildwood Early Childhood Center? Is that your? The existing okay. amount and the average, say, over the last three years. All right, I'm going to go to Mr. Ruggiero if you could speak to the average number of students that are generally enrolled at the Wildwood Early Childhood Center. Paul Ruggiero, Assistant Superintendent of Administration and Finance. Uh, I don't have the, I have this, this current school year, we have 177 students in pre-K and K uh, enrolled at the um, Wildwood Early Childhood Center. And that number has been pretty consistent the last couple of years as well. I just don't have the exact numbers for the two previous fiscal years. Thank you, Mr. Ruggiero. Okay. Uh, the other two questions I had, Mr. Moderator, um, relative to the article where it said transfer from available funds, I just wanted to know 
How much money is in free cash and how much money is in the uh, stabilization fund? Uh, Mr. Hall, if you have the balances available to you on free cash and capital stabilization, feel free to. Uh, free cash is uh, approximately $27.2 million. Um, and I believe the um, capital, and I don't, uh, it will take me a minute to get it, but I believe it's approximately $12 million. Thank you, Mr. Hall. And, um, Last I just question, Mr. McDonald. I just had a comment because the reason why I asked how many students were in the uh, Wildwood Early Education Center because this year is just going to be temporary and Mr. Hull uh, stated previously that uh, we're looking to build a new early education center uh, for about $100 million or 177 students. Mr. McDonald, and please constrain your comments to the scope of the article which is uh, to accommodate the students and staff at the Wildwood Early Childhood Center. Uh, at the middle school and to renovate sections of the middle school in yes. order to accomplish that. Thank you for letting me know that. Ms. Um, Plowman? I just... I'm going to go for further discussion to Ms. Plowman. Melissa Plowman, 153 Main Street. Um, thank you for clarifying some of the concerns. I, I just... Some of the priorities of this relocation were... So I'm just uh, seeking confirmation, I guess, from Dr. Brand. And for information for um, the wider public. So the priorities were um, an outdoor play space for these students. And although this is temporary, just to remind folks, this is a five to seven year window. So we, um, we are, it is essential that we are providing these students with an outdoor play space, adequate bathroom facilities that are accessible um, and um, easy to supervise. And also, which hasn't been spoken about, is um, a, a separate entrance to this wing of the building that is equipped with a security system. So if Dr. Brand could just confirm that those um, priorities that were identified by the Wildwood Building Committee are in fact still being implemented in this project. Uh, Dr. Brand, on the question of the scope of work that would be done under this article. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, yes, I can confirm that uh, later in this meeting, uh, we have a presentation and an update to the residents on both this uh, project as well as the MSBA project. Uh, all of the priorities, in addition to the, uh, in addition, uh, other key elements that will uh, better improve the teaching and learning conditions for the Wildwood students and staff are at the heart of this project. Mr. Moroney, I move the question. All right, the motion, or the, the, there's a motion to move the previous question. The motion to move the previous question is, is a motion to end debate and allow the maker of the main motion, which would be Mr. Ragsdale, uh, up to 10 minutes to address the assembly. There is no debate on a motion to move the previous question. Uh, so. Can I make a second motion? I'm sorry? Can I make a motion before we vote on moving the question? We cannot. It has been, the motion has been made and seconded, so we're going to move immediately into voting on the motion to move the previous question. A motion to move the previous question, again, ends debate on the main motion on Article 32. Uh, Mr. Ragsdale will then have up to 10 minutes if he so chooses to address the assembly, and then we would go to an ultimate vote on the main motion on Article 32. So if you are, the motion has been made and seconded again. There's no discussion on a motion to move the previous question. You, if you are in favor of any debate, on Article 32, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. If you're opposed, say no. Nay. Okay, I'm going to say that it meets a two-thirds majority. I can do that on a procedural motion. Uh, so we, the question has been moved. Uh, Mr. Ragsdale, you are invited, but you are not obligated to address the assembly on your motion on Article 32. You have up to 10 minutes if you so choose. You also may yield your time if you would like to as well. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I will not be using 10 minutes of time, but I will very briefly uh, address the assembly. Uh, ever since the Wildwood Early Childhood Center uh, was closed, we have been looking for the right solution to house our Wildwood students and staff to continue providing them with the education um, that they are entitled to. And a tremendous amount of work has been done, just countless hours um, of time spent uh, and work done between the administration and the Wildwood Building Committee and the School Committee uh, to find an appropriate interim solution, which, again, is an interim solution, but is going to be something that is going to have to last for, as Ms. Plowman had previously said, um, potentially, you know, five years down the road. So it's not a short amount of time, 
And uh, you know, the current solution that we have in place where Wildwood students are split across three different schools uh, throughout the district uh, is really not something that is sustainable. And uh, for many reasons, which I won't get into, uh, they are not together as a community, they are spread out geographically, there are many staff uh, that have to travel between the district from school to school, and therefore students are missing out on instructional time because there is so much travel time. Uh, so the solution that we have finally hit upon of splitting the school and creating a campus on Carter Lane so that some students are housed at the west and the remainder at the middle school, uh, we are absolutely convinced is both the best interim solution that will provide appropriate educational spaces and appropriate learning environments for the Wildwood students, uh, and that also is fiscally responsible to the town and something that the taxpayers um, can you know, proudly and um, enthusiastically support as an appropriate solution while we continue the long-term solution of building another elementary school. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ragsdale. Uh, so we're on to the vote on Article 32, which is uh, for the amount of $545,359 to renovate sections of the Wilmington Middle School to accommodate the relocation of Wildwood Early Childhood Center staff and students, and for relocation costs and furnishings and equipment, including design and engineering costs, site preparation, and construction costs. If you are in favor of that amount, again, $545,359 on Article 32, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. If you're opposed, say no. Voted unanimously. Article 33, which is for a sum of money for the replacement and upgrade of public address PA systems at the Early Childhood Centers, Elementary and Intermediate Schools, Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Stephen Turner, 59 Washington Avenue. Uh, I move that $45,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the superintendent of schools with the approval of the school committee for the replacement and upgrade of public address systems at the early childhood centers, elementary and intermediate schools, including any incidental or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. Turner. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? second. Motion has been made and seconded. Finance committee recommends approval of Article 33 discussion. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Um, his motion seemed to read a little different than what I'm reading up there, but I just have a question, Mr. Moderator. Um, with regard to available funds, um, maybe this is for the manager. Um, with regard to stabilization funding, um, is it accurate to say that um, stabilization funds get transferred from free cash? Mr. Is McDonald, we are on a motion uh, to replace the PA systems at some of our schools. Yes, I was just trying to decide if I need to ask for this money to come from s stabilization funding or free cash. And I just wanted to see if I could get that clarification from the manager if, in fact, um, the stabilization fund was transferred from the free cash to the stabilization fund. Mr. McDonald, the, the motion presently before the assembly would be appropriate these funds from the fiscal 24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town. Um, do you see up the, up yeah. the screen? Yeah. So, Mr. McDonald, a, we've discussed Mr. Yes, the, the structure. Mr. Point McDonald, of order. Mr. McDonald, I'm going to explain the structure of this article as I have in the past. Many articles you will see start off the same way, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate comma, transfer from available funds, or borrow pursuant to any applicable statute. That sets the universe of options for which something can be paid for. And then it goes on to a sum of money, which is a vague, vague clause which allows the motion to control how much money is then going to be up for consideration to appropriate. And then it describes what we're, being, what we're paying. So the motion is going to read differently from how the article is written in the warrant, as has been done for the last 32. Mr. Moderator, point of order. With regard to the law, with regard to advertising the articles to the general public and the taxpayers, I believe that the article that gets put forward to the body here by law has to be what's advertised. Unless the gentleman who presents the article would like to amend it. Mr. Maybe McDonald, the town Mr. council could chime in on this. Mr. McDonald, I'm quite confident that to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate to pay for that from the fiscal 24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town is within that scope. Town Council, if you care to confirm. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator, through you to the meeting. The, the article itself, as, as the moderator has, has explained, lays out all of the, uh, the options for the town. There, the, 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 the speaker just uh, essentially misstated the, the process. Uh, the moderator is correct. The article lays it out. 
and uh, gives the warning to the voters of the various options. The motion that we're looking at is to take the money from the tax levy. That is raise and appropriate. That is the warning contained within the article. The article allows other options for consideration, but those would have to be made pursuant to the motion. The current motion is to take the funds from the tax levy. My, my, my question is, how can he present an article that's different than what's advertised in the book, up on the screen, and narrow it down and exclude the transfer of a, from available funds? Ms. How, Mr. how Mr. is that legal? Mr. McDonald, uh, as has been discussed throughout today's proceedings and, and prior town meetings, motions need to be within the scope of an article. And the motion that was made uh, by Mr. Turner is well within the scope of the article as it's written. That it is different is not, does not create an illegality because all of the motions that we have heard so far on each of the articles read differently than the articles that are written in the warrant. He narrowed it down and he just, the, the attorney just said he mis, misstated it. I don't believe the council said that the motion yes, was misstated. Mis, mis, Mr. Mr. Moderator, again, the, the article gives a range of options. The motion may be narrower than the article. So when you say it excludes, it in fact specifies the motion. It is, it is required by this meeting to determine the funding source for any article. This motion has determined that funding source. You must have a specific funding source. You cannot have a range of funding sources unless you specify the amount to come from each funding source. In this case, the determination was made to have the funding come from the tax levy. That is within the scope of the article as determined by the moderator and therefore is a lawful motion. Mr. Moderator, I would like to have you note my opposition to this and my disagreement with the attorney. Um, but I would still like to have my question answered. Um, if Mr. Hull would be willing to tell us if the stabilization fund money has been transferred from past free cash funds. Um, yes or no Mr. question? Mr. McDonald, that's outside of the scope of this article and the motion that's currently up for discussion. I think the answer is yes. the discussion, Ms. Toth. Question I have is just clarification on um, the article that we are, are voting for money to upgrade the PA system for early childhood centers, elementary and intermediate schools. If the early childhood centers or center, Wildwood, is dispersed between two different schools that are not on this list, are we upgrading their PA systems or are the childhood centers not being um, being removed the money to um, do that for the childhood centers are being removed from the amount, which means is if for me to clarify, we don't have two childhood centers. We have two other school systems that are not included in the upgrade right now. Is the money going to be put on hold for the childhood centers, or is it going to be expended to upgrade the PA systems in the middle school and the, and the West? Mr. Lord. Uh, Ken Lord, Director of Technology. Um, this article is a, we've been, had this article multiple years as we replaced intercoms across all of our school systems. The funding for this specific year's article will address the intercom at the Boutwell School and additional class, uh, hallway speakers at the Woburn Street School. This is the final phase of a multi-year intercom project. So for clarification, this was just an overall uh, request, the second phase of, of replacing? It's actually the third phase. Or the third phase? Yes, it's the last, third and final phase. No work was done at the Wildwood. Okay. I guess I'm still a little confused, but I will accept that explanation. <laughs> Thank you. For the discussion on Article uh, 33. Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. You are in favor of $45,000 for the replacement and upgrade of the public address PA systems at the early childhood centers, elementary and intermediate schools. So indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. 
Article 34, which is for a sum of money for the school department for the replacement of a voice over internet protocol VoIP phone systems at all school buildings, including any incidental or related costs and expenses. I take any other action related thereto. Mr. Fennelly. Good morning, Mr. Moderator. Excuse me. Jesse Fenley, 45 Andover Street. Uh, I move that $200,000 be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be spent by the superintendent of schools with the approval of the school committee for the replacement of a voice over internet protocol phone system at all school buildings, including any incidental or related costs and expenses. Thank you, Mr. Fennelly. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? The motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 34 uh, discussion. Seeing none, if you were in favor of Article 34 and the sum of $200,000 for the school department for the replacement of a voice over internet protocol VoIP phone system at all school buildings, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Article 35 is pursuant to the provisions of General Law Chapter 40, Section 5B to create a special purpose stabilization fund to be known as the Opioid Settlement Stabilization Fund. And further to adopt the last paragraph of said five, Section 5B and to dedicate uh, to such fund without a further appropriation 100% of the Opioid Litigation Settlement Funds recovered by the town and further to transfer <coughs> from available funds a sum of money equal to that previously received by the town from opioid litigation settlements resulting from the town's participation in the National Opioid Multidistrict Litigation into said Opioid Settlement Stabilization Fund, Ms. Maselli. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> to see if the town will vote pursuant to the provisions of General Law Chapter 40, Section 5B, to create a new special purpose stabilization fund to be known as the Opioid Settlement Stabilization Fund, which may be expended for all of the purposes allowed by law, including those outlined in applicable opioid litigation settlement documents, a document prepared by the Substance Abuse Bureau of the Commonwealth's Office of Health and Human Services Department found at https colon slash slash www.mass.gov slash doc slash Massachusetts dash abatement dash term slash download entitled abatement strategies and consistent with any state guidelines or regulations further clarifying allowable uses of opioid lit litigation settlement funds and further to adopt the last paragraph of said 5B and dedicate to such fund without further appropriation 100% of the opioid litigation settlement funds received by the town. And further, to transfer from available funds free cash $109,109.41, such amount equal to that previously received Ms. by Ms. the Ms. does town. the remainder of your motion read as it does in the book? Then. Yes, it does. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? second. Motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article thir uh, 35. Discussion, uh, Mr. McDonald. Yes, can you repeat the amount of money that the town received in opioid funds? $109,109.41. And um, as I read the article behind you, Mr. Moderator, it says, um, uh, pursuant to the provisions of General Law Chapter 40, Section 5B. So my question is relatively simple. If there's a law that um, is on the books to control where this money goes, why are we voting uh, for a stabilization fund. I'm going to go to town council on the question of uh, how uh, provisions of mass general laws are adopted by town meetings. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. The reference to the statute is actually a reference to the statute that controls stabilization funds. So this article is intended to address a, a couple of issues with respect to the, the uh, deposit of the opioid settlement funds. So the town has received opioid settlement funds the way Massachusetts law works under Chapter 44, Section 53 of the General Laws, funds that are received by the town, unless otherwise provided for by law, go into the town's general fund. So these, the, these um, settlement funds would be placed directly into the town's general fund. However, the settlement itself specifies how those funds may be expended. So unlike the usual course of action with, with general fund monies, which are then simply appropriated by town meeting for whatever purpose is determined appropriate by town meeting. In this case, the settlement agreement itself limits what can be done with these funds. So even though they go into the general fund, they can only be expended for opioid remediation purposes. So the intent of this article is to take the, the monies that have already been received from opioid settlements in addition to 
future opioid settlement monies and place them into what we know as a special stable stabilization fund created pursuant to Chapter 40, Section 5B of the general laws so that this, this opioid settlement stabilization fund would be the repository of all opioid settlement monies that come into the town so that town meeting can then appropriate monies out from that stabilization fund specifically for opioid remediation purposes. The reason we're accepting a portion of the statute is there is a provision in the statute that allows the town to essentially dedicate a stabilization fund and allow the funds so dedicated uh, not less than 25 percent, in this case it will be 100 percent, of the opioid funds to go directly into the stabilization fund without having to go through any other process. And this allows, again, these opioid, stable, these opioid settlement funds to be placed in a single fund to be used for the, the exact purposes for which the settlement agreement was, was approved by the, by the court in this, uh, in this litigation. Ms. Thank Martin. you, sir. Mr. Moderator, um, I guess one of my concerns was, um, would the town have to um, put out for bids um, the appropriation of this money. For example, let me just give you a scenario. Like, there's a detox center that was built down the street, and um, Mr. McDonald, we're gonna we're gonna take this piecemeal. Uh, would the town need to go to bid for where this stabilization account, uh, stabilization, stabilization fund, excuse me, uh, would be held? Mr. Moderate, depending on what uses are made of the funds, there's a potential that some of those uses might be subject to, to uh, bidding. This statute doesn't, or this, this article doesn't relate to the future use. It simply relates to the depositing of these funds into a stabilization fund. Thank you. Okay. Um, the other question was, I believe the police department hired a um, lady to um, deal with the opioid problem. And my question is, could this money be used to fund her salary. So, Town Council, to you, would the terms of the settlement that was approved by the court uh, be, make it permissible uh, the payment of the substance abuse and health and wellness coordinator's uh, salary? Through, through you, Mr. Moderator, that we would have to look at exactly if, if, the, if the individual is doing work that's consistent with the settlement agreement with respect to remediation of, of the opioid crisis, that's a possibility that would have to be examined. But again, this article is not addressing how the money is going to be expended. It's addressing how the money is going to be retained. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Toth. Uh, John Toth, 54 Free Lorenzo Drive. This may be clear to everybody, but when you say fund the, and the monies that are coming in, is that segregating this money into, say, like a separate bank account? Mr. Moderator, through you again, yes, that's the purpose of establishing the spe special stabilization fund. These monies will be separate and apart from the town's general fund, from the treasury, and so they could be maintained and monitored and would then be solely used for opioid remediation based upon future appropriation by town meeting. Thank you. Further discussion on Article 35. Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. If you are in favor of Article 35, again, the Finance Committee recommends approval. Of Article 35. <laughs> okay, it wasn't just me. Uh, to pursuant to the provisions of General Laws Chapter 40, Section 5B, to create a new special purpose stabilization fund to be known as the Opioid Settlement Stabilization Fund, and further to adopt the last paragraph of said Section 5B and dedicate to such fund without further appropriation 100% of the Opioid Litigation Settlement Funds, that being the sum of $109,109.41. Hundred percent of the opioid settlement funds received by the town, and further to transfer from available funds a sum of money equal to that previously received by the town. That's that same figure uh, from opioid litigation settlements resulting from the town's participation in the national opioid multi-district litigation and to set opioid stabilization fund. If you are in favor of that amount and everything I just rambled off, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Article 36. For a sum of money to deposit in the other post-employment liability trust fund established in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 32B, Section 20, Mr. Bendel. Mr. Moderator, I move that $1 million be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be deposited in the other post-employment benefits liability trust fund in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 32B, Section 20. Thank you, Mr. Bendel. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded discussion. 
Seeing none, a call for the vote if you are in favor of Article 36. Again, Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 36. The sum of $1 million to deposit in the other post employment liability trust fund established in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 32, Section 20. So indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Article 37, which is for a sum of money to deposit in the capital stabilization fund as established by vote on Article 23 at the April 27, 1991 annual town meeting, Mr. Cairo. Mr. Moderator, I move that the sum of $1,242,000 be appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town to be deposited in the capital stabilization fund as established by vote on Article 23 at the April 27, 1991 annual town meeting. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 37. Discussion, Mr. McDonald. Yes, Mr. Moderator. Um, a previous question that I asked was how much money is in the stabilization fund now? And the answer was $12 million. So we're being asked to tax people to raise, what was it? Mr. Carr, can you repeat that amount? The amount was $1,242,000. Okay, so um, there's $12 million in the stabilization fund and, and, he, and Mr. Kyra um, is making the motion to raise through taxation another large amount of money, $1,240,000. Is that correct? It's to be appropriated from the fiscal 24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town. And that's not narrowed down, it's definitely through other revenues also? It, it's through taxation, Mr. McDonald. Okay. So. Um, I just wanted to um, voice my opposition to this. We have $12 million in a stabilization fund. We have $27.2 million in free cash. And um, uh, quite honestly, when I was watching the Finance Committee meeting, I was quite disturbed when I heard that I believe it was 800 and something thousand dollars that was appropriated at the last meeting for boilers that didn't get replaced or need to get replaced, which went into free cash. And so, to be quite honest with you, I don't know why people aren't sick of the game that's being played with them. So I'm opposed to this. That's all I wanted to say. Further discussion on Article 37. Seeing none, we'll call for the vote if you are in favor of $1,242,000 to be deposited in the Capital Stabilization Fund as established by vote on Article 23 at the April 27, 1991 annual town meeting. So indicate by saying aye. aye. If you're opposed, say no. no. Voted. Article 38, which is for a sum of money to pay the Middlesex Retirement System in addition to the annual assessment, Mr. De Palma. I move that a sum of $1 million be raised and appropriated from the FY24 tax levy and other general revenues of the town for payment to the Middlesex Retirement System in addition to our annual assessment. Thank you, Mr. DePalmer. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? Motion is made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 38. Discussion, Mr. McDonald. Yes, Mr. Moderator. Through you, a question for Mr. DePalmer. No, um, you can ask me your question and I will try and and queue it up to whoever I feel is most appropriate to answer it. Okay, so um, we're being asked to uh, put money into the Middlesex uh, retirement system. Correct me if I'm wrong, but each employee that is employed by the town of Wilmington gets money from their checks, from their salaries put into that um, initially. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Paul? That's correct. And my next question is, what type of due diligence scrutiny um, is being put on the Middlesex County Retirement Board to see that their investments are making money, generating income, so that we're not bailing them out? In, in other words, if they're investing in, in some FTX um, okay, Mr. cryptocurrency. I'm going to try to rein in I'd, your I'd like your to inquiry. just try to get, get some answers to that. Just to the level of type of due diligence, <laughs> Mr. Hall, if you can can comment on the uh, diligence that goes into assessing the Middlesex retirement system. Well, well certainly there is a uh, board that reviews uh, the decisions that are made, but I believe, and I would defer to the finance director, that um, most, if not all, of those monies are uh, put in a state investment program. Mr. Perry. 
Thank you. Through you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, the town manager is correct. The Middlesex County Retirement System is overseen by the, the basically the state board. Um, and then the money is invested in um, what's called perimeter print, which is basically a very strict guidelines as to how these funds can and can't be invested. But I can't speak beyond that. That I'd recommend probably having to speak to the board themselves to get more answers on that. That's beyond the scope of my knowledge here. Thank, Mr. Thank Moderator, you, Mr. Can, can anybody tell us what kind of return has been made, even just last year? If somebody has an average of the last two or three years, what type of, um, have, they, have they made a positive uh, Mr. McDonald, flow, this, uh, the motion that, before, that is before the assembly now is whether or not to make an additional payment, or a payment in addition to the annual assessment in the amount of $1 million. So okay. I, I don't want to go further down the rabbit hole as no to problem. Can, the, can, the intricacies can, of the No problem. Gotcha. Strategies. Can I just ha uh, have the manager ask, uh, answer this question? Do you have a number for all the employees that are employed by the town that the number would represent how much money from their salaries that the town has to pay into the Middlesex County Retirement Board, exclusive of this article, how much every year they, like for example, last year, Mr. Hall, do you know how much they've paid into the Middlesex County Retirement I'm, Board? Mr. Mr. McDonald, I'm trying to understand the question you're asking. Are okay, you asking so for the, we're looking for this amount me, of money. Let me try and see if I understand it. Are you asking for the total sum of money that, that came out of the paychecks for all town employees that went to the Middlesex Retirement System last year? Any amount of money that the town paid that was taken out of employees' checks that went into the Middlesex County Retirement System. I think okay. the answer to the, my question is yes. So Mr. Hall or Mr. Perry, do either of you have any idea how much money came from the salaries uh, of town employees to the Middlesex Retirement System last year? I, I cannot say what the aggregate amount of money that came from all the employees uh, is, no. Okay, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand to oppose this article for the, uh, for the reasons I don't see due diligence being done here. I don't see anybody being able to stand up and say, this is the amount of money that was returned from their investments. This is the amount of money that the town pays into it. So until um, we have some respectable uh, due diligence Mr. presentations, Mr. Your I don't think I can support this. Mr. McDonald, this. your comments are out of order and you're done speaking on this article. Have a nice... You, you have continued to be disruptive. I do not wish to just expel you from the meeting, but Mass General Laws Chapter 17 does give me the authority to do that if you continue to be dis uh, dis disruptive. So again, I'm not looking to kick anyone out of the meeting, but if you continue to be disruptive, I will have you removed. Further discussion on Article 38. Motor. Mr. Hall. I, I would just note that the purpose of this uh, piece is that the town of uh, Wilmington, along with all the other towns in the Middlesex retirement system and across the state have a uh, responsibility to make payments into the retirement system and we have a, a liability that is, needs to be retired by 2037. Um, the, the premise here is that in addition to the annual payments that we make to the Middlesex retirement system, similar to what you might do on your mortgage, you can pay the, the minimum amount or you can pay an additional amount and expedite, expedite the uh, retirement of that obligation. And that is the purpose of this article, so that in addition to the uh, required payment, we're making an additional payment so that we can uh, advance our uh, ability to cover that liability. Further discussion on Article 38. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. If you are in favor, of the sum of $1 million to be paid into the Middlesex Retirement System in addition to the annual assessment. So indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. No. Voted. Article 39, to see what sum the town will vote to transfer into various line items of the fiscal year 2023 budget from other line items of said budget and from other available funds or take any other action related thereto, Mr. West. Mr. Moderator, I move that $130,000 be transferred from the following fiscal year 2023 accounts. Public Works, Contractual Services, Snow and Ice, $130,000. The entire amount of available funds being $130,000 to the following fiscal year 2023 accounts. Police, salary, Police Department salary, overtime, $130,000. Total, 
Thank you, Mr. West. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your booklet reads that the Finance Committee took no action on this article just prior to today's uh, meeting. Uh, the Finance Committee did meet and they did discuss Article 39. Mr. Doherty, what is the Finance Committee's recommendation to the Assembly? Approval. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Discussion on Article 39. See none, I want to call for the vote. If you are in favor of transferring $130,000 from the Department of Public Works Contractual Services, Snow and Ice, to the Police Department salary overtime, uh, again on Article 39, so indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Yep. On to Article 40. Article 40 is uh, the subject property is contained on map on page 22 in your warrant booklet. It is to authorize the select board to acquire by gift, purchase eminent domain, or otherwise all or a portion of the property or any interest therein located at 333 Andover Street and shown on assessor's map R1, lot 21A, Mr. Bendel. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that $3,798,698 <laughs> be appropriated from available funds, free cash, to acquire by gift, purchase, or eminent domain, or otherwise all or a portion of the property or any interest therein, including any structures or improvements thereon, and temporary access easement thereon, located at 333 Andover Street and shown on assessor's map R1 as lot 21A, for municipal purposes of locating a fire police substation or other municipal facility thereon, and for active and passive recreational uses, as determined by the select board to be in the best interest of the town, including all costs incidental and related thereto, including but not limited to the appraisal, the assessment costs, and further uh, to authorize the select board to acquire said property by gift, purchase, or eminent domain, or otherwise take such actions and exec ex execute such documents and agreements as are necessary to effectuate the purpose of this article. Thank you, Mr. Bendel. I'll accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? second. Motion has been made and seconded. Ladies and gentlemen, the Finance Committee, uh, it, it is noted in your booklet, recommended approval of this article. They did meet just prior again to today's meeting to reconsider their vote. Mr. Doherty, what was the recommendation after that meeting this morning? It was approval. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Discussion? Mr. Moderator. Mr. Bendel. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Very briefly, uh, folks, I would just like to set the table, then yield my turn to Mr. Uh, town Manager, who has a few slides to help depict this. Uh, but I believe that this is a unique opportunity for our community in our long pursuit of a North uh, Wilmington Fire Police Station. Um, and I believe that this has been endorsed by the majority of the Select Board, the Finance Committee. And at this time, I'd like to yield to the Town Manager to give you a better idea of the location, potential uses, and costs. Mr. Hall. This uh, property the town has uh, had its eye on for quite some time since really the mid-90s. Uh, certainly my predecessor was involved over the years in discussions uh, with representatives of the family to acquire the property. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for any number of reasons, uh, it did not happen. Uh, and, and one of the um, circumstances, as uh, we all know, there were other uh, large projects that came along and such as the public safety building and the uh, middle school, more recently the high school. Uh, so our, shifted fo our focus shifted a bit. Uh, and one of the reasons that we uh, w were not as aggressive uh, in those years uh, is the recognition that um, th the uh, property did not appear to be uh, under any kind of an urgent uh, uh, sale, the uh, property has remained uh, in this sale mode for some period of time. Uh, more recently, uh, the property uh, appears to be under some kind of an agreement. We're not sure exactly what the terms are, uh, or a potential agreement uh, with a uh, development firm. Uh, we believe that the time is now to pursue this property. Uh, this is similar to an approach that we've taken with other properties, I would note, uh, when the uh, Archdiocese of Boston contacted us uh, about the property next to St. Dorothy's uh, in that property before it went on the market, uh, we saw fit to pursue that property, uh, recognizing that we would have potential public uses for it. Uh, similarly, the Entile property, when there was a window of opportunity in the 
uh, bank, uh, after foreclosing on the prior owners, uh, uh, came to the town or the town pursued that. Uh, this circumstance also presents itself. Uh, this property, uh, as you know, has been uh, a farmland for uh, many years. Uh, as uh, uh, board member Bendel noted, uh, there is a number of potential uses that we uh, envision for this, one being a fire substation. Uh, if you've been up in that neck of the woods, uh, it is uh, uh, close to the Foster's Pond area. Uh, there's a trail system in there. There's also trails extending into uh, the town of Andover. Uh, so there's uh, certainly those kind of opportunities. Uh, also the opportunity for uh, athletic fields. Uh, all those things uh, I think are compelling. Uh, not uh, also not to disregard the fact that this is probably the largest uh, piece of uh, property, undeveloped property, or largely undeveloped property uh, that remains uh, in the town. Uh, so it's, uh, it's certainly my belief that it is uh, appropriate uh, for the town meeting to authorize the board uh, to uh, pursue this property and to provide uh, the financial uh, wherewithal to do that. Uh, and uh, at this point, um, I, I would be open to any questions. Further discussion on Article 40. Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't believe anything else I say, you better heed what I'm about to say on this article. This is a very, very dangerous, hugely financial impacting article. This is looking to take it by eminent domain. I did what I think was the responsible thing, and I went and knocked on the door of one of the property owners to actually try to get some information. And I met with the husband of um, one of the property owners, and he told me that the property is under agreement and that there is a purchase and sales agreement. And I say that because the laws on the books relative to eminent domain show that you would have to compensate somebody for fair market value. And if this development company who has the purchase and sales agreement can show to the court what their profit could be and the family could show what their sale price is to the um, developer, you're going to be on the hook for liability for that. The amount that was presented to you today, that's very, very low compared to what you'd have to spend. To give you an example, with the practice field is out here, um, that was owned by a Froughton family. That was taken, that was um, bought by a developer and was taken by eminent domain by the town. I think it was like years and years ago, it was like $300,000 that the town paid for that. But then they got sued and they had to pay like 1.3 million, like three times what that property was taken for. This is like way, way bigger than that. In addition, if you see that dotted line up there, that's an easement, and I believe it's, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Hall, is that owned by National Grid? That is a uh, easement uh, by uh, New England Power. New England Power, so public utility companies, they actually have the ability to take property by eminent domain for public purposes. So the, the question that I have is, how can the town actually um, take something from a public utility company by eminent domain? So is that another layer of financial liability that the town would have to incur to get sued by New England Power? So I think, you, I'm opposed to this, and I, I don't think you're being presented accurate information as to the liability here. It's like, hey, we, we could have possibly bought this when it wasn't under agreement to maybe build a school like some of us wanted to have a school built there. And you could have had parks and fields and you could have had a substation and a hockey rink and all kinds of things, but nope, we had to build a school right here and knock down a $22 million building that could have been used for right, Mr. town Mr. McDonald, offices. You're starting but to get off topic. that all aside, this is a dangerous article. Please know, folks, that I did my due diligence to what I think, and I went to the family, and I, I confirmed that there's a purchase and sales agreement. So what you're doing here, right, is you're opening up liability to the town. 
All right, Mr. Uh, Town Council, uh, two questions to you. First is the effect of a purchase and sale agreement on a potential uh, eminent domain taking, uh, and then the same question as it would relate to a, um, a utility easement on the property. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Obviously, we'll take the first question first regarding the uh, purchase and sale ag agreement. Uh, Obviously, any, any private property owner selling their property can enter into a purchase and sale agreement. The property uh, in, in an eminent domain, if an eminent domain is, is pursued, and again, um, the way this article is, is structured, uh, somewhat different from some of the articles we saw earlier, the motion itself maintains the, the various options that were contained in the article. So it does, it does allow the town to pursue a number of mechanisms to acquire this property. Eminent domain is simply one tool in the toolbox and obviously is, is the uh, preference of last resort. But that being said, the, uh, the, an eminent domain taking would be based upon a, an appraisal of highest and best use, and uh, that's, that's the, uh, uh, the, the legal obligation of the town to make that payment. And so that, that would be determined, and uh, um, were there to be litigation, the, the, deter the, the court would be determining what, what uh, is the appropriate appraised value. It's not necessarily related to a purchase and sale agreement, which could have uh, a, a more speculative uh, number associated with it that may not be attached to a defensible appraisal. On the second issue with respect to the uh, New England power easement, the town would be acquiring this property, be it through a uh, purchase gift or eminent domain, subject to any existing encumbrance. So the town would not be taking the, uh, the easement that's currently maintained by New England Power, the town will be acquiring the property subject to that easement. Again, with the existence of that easement, that does also indicate a reduction in the value of the property, either to the town or to any developer, because that easement is in place and could not be uh, uh, undermined by the use of the property. So again, uh, the town would be acquiring and paying uh, a value based upon uh, the highest and best use as appraised with a, a legitimate, uh, appropriate appraisal, and would, would be taking the property or, or acquiring the property, I should say, subject to the New England power easement. Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Rich. I'm going to go first to Ms. Toth, to Ms. Sullivan, to Ms. McCoy. Ms. Toth. Linda Toth, 54 Fiorenza Drive. Um, 12 years ago, I built, or I didn't build, but I bought my house on Fiorenza Drive because it would accommodate my growing grandchildren family. A um, few years into being there, uh, they, there was um, an article or a, somebody wanted to build housing on the Sharapa farm. They put in, they did an elaborate um, presentation and, and everything. And at that time, it was voted down because of the number of housing units that were going in there, the lack of sewage going in there, and um, the disturbance of cars driving down a very small two-lane highway between Andover and 125. And we thought uh, that that was the end of that um, property being bought or used um, for any housing project or large projects. And then, unbeknownst to, I would say, a good portion of the neighborhood, which is just across from the Sharapa farm, that area that they want to um, use for um, a substation, a hockey rink, uh, um, a recreation center, uh, will add traffic to an already um, overburdened road. We have indu industry at the end of Andover Street that goes to 125. We have cut off um, traffic from Andover to 125 to 93, both coming and going. We have semi-trucks being repaired. We have Jospin and we have the other um, industrial park road at the end. They are building a storage center on Andover. 
all of that traffic is going to be coming down Andover Street, and if that property is sold, obtained, whatever it is, whatever the um, improvements that they're going to put on that property is going to add more traffic. I don't have a problem with a substation being there because our end of town does need to have um, quick and available fire and police emergencies. The problem is that I don't know how other people on Andover, other residents, would appreciate having the sirens being uh, um, started at 2 o'clock in the morning to wake us up. I mean, everybody has that problem. I understand that's some, something that we would have to cope with. But for me, I'm speaking for myself. I can't speak for my neighbors or the other people that live on Andover Dover Street that surrounds that property. I think that it would be a bad situation uh, for our cost of, of um, the cost of our house. Our house is not being um, reduced. There's also, if you noticed on the, 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 sh the picture that they had showed about the easement, there is wetlands back there. How are, you go how are you going to um, build anything when you have supposedly wet areas that don't drain? drain? And if you look at a property drone picture on some of that land, there is, in the back, there is logs. I have, I've seen trucks with big trees putting logs back there. And there is also a place where there is metal. This is on that property. So how uh, are, is the town going to absorb getting rid of all that stuff? So for me, my opinion is that I would not want the town to take this property and leave it and use it for whatever, and not to be nasty, but who's to say that the town would not sell that property to developers to get, it up, to get out of our 40B problems that we are having. We do not need any more traffic. We do not need a lot more housing in that area. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. I, I want to go to Chief Kavanaugh first, just on the very narrow uh, issue, just to provide an explanation uh, on the comment about sirens going off at 2 in the morning. Bill Kavanaugh, 2 Jones Ave Fire Chief. Uh, I think I speak on behalf of Chief Desmond as well. Our personnel are very cognizant of when they are activating sirens uh, at night. It's only for safety. and. Uh, I think if we talk to the people on Church Street, it is not, uh, not typical that we go roaring down the street at 2 a.m., uh, I'm up, you're up type of deal. So uh, I, would, I would oppose that notion that we're going to be coming out of there at 2 a.m. with the, the sirens ripping to wake the neighbors up. Thank you, Mr. Kavanaugh. Ms. Sullivan? Suzanne Sullivan, 60 Lawrence Street. Um, I had just a couple of quick questions. So in the article, it states that a portion of the property, is that because of the Andover section and the town would the, not purchase the Andover section? Is that the, correct? Uh, it's all or a portion of the property. So the, the scope as defined in the article would have, uh, if, if this is the desired course of the assembly, would permit the select board to acquire all of it or a portion of it. And it does not specify with any more specificity within their motion what portion it would be. Okay, so I'm just imagining like it wouldn't like be like one half and not the other half. Could Theo that, could that potentially could. happen? Theo theoretically, it, it certainly it, could be one half or another, but that right. all this would do is authorize the select board to acquire by uh, gift purchase or eminent domain all or a portion of the property behind me. Okay, all right. Um, my other question was, um, 
the tax status. I, I just want to double check and make sure that it's still not Chapter 61A or that there's uh, what the status is at this time. Mr. Hall. Uh, this property is not under uh, Chapter 61A. It, I think the last year it was was 2014. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, that's Im important to know. Also, um, recently there was a proposal uh, to the Board of Selectmen for um, a development of this property. I would just um, ask, after the comments um, previous to, to mine, about a concern of housing here. Could you please just recap quickly? I know we don't have a lot of time. Just quickly what that proposal entailed. Uh, Mr. Hall. Uh, the proposal that uh, was presented in December to the board uh, called for uh, something in the order of, uh, I believe it was 650 units, um, multi-story, six, seven-story uh, apartment uh, buildings um, uh, by this particular uh, developer. Um, and that was uh, the concept that they had in mind uh, a more recent conversation with the developer, they are talking about the prospect of uh, reducing the size of that development, but based upon the numbers, again, very preliminary uh, that they offered up was something perhaps in the order of uh, 300, uh, give or take, uh, units. But uh, their, their plan appears to be uh, a, an apartment uh, development. Thank you, and just a note, I think I'd rather have a fire substation than 350 units here, um, if I'm worried about traffic. Um, the other, um, I'm trying to think, well, the other question, well, it's, it's not really a question, but it's a comment, but my memory is the reason why the property on Wildwood, where the ball fields are now, cost the town so much money, was because it was an inappropriate um, assessment done of the property and the town had to pay more money of what the property was worth. And I think it's important to note that. Um, also, it's also my understanding that the town cannot pay more than the fair market value of this property. Is that true? Uh, Mr. Holt, for that, but, but uh, to the, the authority of this meeting. There's a, a motion right now for $3,798,698. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be the limit that the select board would be authorized to spend. Mm -hmm. If there were some reason that would cause that to go above and beyond that, mm -hmm. we'd be meeting again to discuss that. Uh, and then yeah. on the, uh, th the limit of fair market value for uh, the acquiring of a property. I, I would defer to council on that one. Mr. Rich? Thank you, Ms. Moderator, through you. Um, I can clarify a, a couple of things uh, as long as I have this opportunity. First, uh, there is actually no statutory limitation on the uh, amount that uh, uh, could be expended for the acquisition of property. It, it's interesting to note that cities are specifically limited to not being able to pay more than 25% of the assessed value over an average of three years, whereas towns don't have that similar limitation, interestingly. However, of course, it, in, if, if this were to be an eminent domain taking, which is simply an option, that uh, that eminent domain taking would uh, be subject to compensation based upon the appraised uh, fair market value, not the assessed value, but the appraised value, and uh, that is that is somewhat reflected in the dollar amount that uh, is part of the motion that you see today. I think it's also important to point out, I heard a comment about uh, if the town does acquire this property, would the town then sell the property to a developer? And it must be remembered that any, any disposition of the property or any development of the property, construction of a uh, police or fire substation or a recreational facility would have to come back to town meeting for, for approval. Town meeting would have to approve the disposition of any property acquired by the town. Town meeting would also have to approve the uh, appropriation of funds to build facilities on the building. So this is, again, merely uh, the, the ability to acquire this property for specified purposes then the execution of those purposes would come back to this body for approval, either by appropriation or some other necessary vote. 
Thank you very much. That's it for my questions. Um, I appreciate all the feedback. Um, I just want to say, for years, I'm, I served on the Open Space Committee back in 1999, 2000. This property was number one on the list to acquire for the town. Um, we don't have any more land, really, in this town. And um, with all the development, everything that's, you know, all the so-called improvements and the changes, which are seem almost inevitable, I personally think that we have an obligation to make sure that our townspeople have what they need. And um, there's been studies done all over the place about how important it is for people to get out into open space and you know, take a walk in the woods, take a walk with nature. This property, one of the desirable things about this property is it can hook up to our extensive trail system, the Avis Trail, which is the Andover Trail System, and also the Bay Circuit Trail System. Um, it's really, really important for us to do the right thing, in my opinion, for the future of the town, for our kids. We've been so good in this town about appropriating money for active recreation, um, and I always stand in support of that. I also think that it, the time has come for us to also support some passive recreation in town. If you want pass, passive recreation in this town, you have to leave the town. Um, and economically speaking, it's good to keep people in our town, using our trails, using our space. It helps us tremendously. Um, people will go to stores, they'll spend their money if they come and they stay in Wilmington. I hope everybody stands in, um, in favor of this article. I understand that there may be some opposition, but as long as the people have paid fairly for what this property is worth, then I'm all for it, so please. Let's do the right thing. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go to Mr. McCoy, and then we go to Mr. De Palma. Mr. Yeah, McCoy. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Michael McCoy, 11 Treasure Hill Road, Wilmington. When I first heard the uh, Board of Selectmen, I mean, I apologize, the Select Board. I've only said Board of Selectmen about 100,000 times, so <laughs> I'll get it straight. Uh, the Select Board, when I saw that they were going to executive session to talk about taking this property, I'm all for it, absolutely. I don't care whose idea it is, I don't care whose idea it is, as long as it's in the best interest of the community. I think that would be a wonderful thing for us to take the property, absolutely. But as time goes on, bear with me, uh, Mr. Moderator, I may need to ask a question, make a commentary, and I'd like to make a commentary in the end. I mean, this is the first now. I'm not watching the Selectman's meetings. People say, did you see the meeting? I go, listen, if you're gonna see, you know, I'm not watching the Selectman's meeting. If you wanna see me on the TV tube, then that's where I would be, but I'm very happy being where I'm at. And I just hear things. And from what I understand that the Board of Selectmen, uh, the Select Board it was uh, showing due diligence to take this property. And then tonight I'm hearing that it's only $3.7 million. And what bothers me is, there was never, and I apologize and get an answer, I don't remember anyone ever talking about a dollar amount relative to this. And that's just one quick question. Has this ever been brought up, the $3.7 million and change uh, other than today? Um, I, I will speak, uh, Mr. Hall, a question to you as to process as to how that figure was calculated. So and, the, and the when was it disclosed? Was it dis I, the question is, when was that 3.7 million and change disclosed? Is this the first we're hearing of it, or did it get brought up at previous meetings? And if it did, I apologize. I don't know. The uh, property uh, was uh, appraised, and we received that information back on April 11th or thereabouts, so it's only been recently that we had the number, and so that is why the number is just being uh, presented uh, more recently. All right, so that $3.7 million, so is this, would I be safe to say, is this the first that we're hearing, the $3.7 million? Has it been disclosed at a public hearing I believe or a public meeting? Is, I believe the answer is yes, Mr. McCoy. All right. M my only concern is that I was kind of excited to see this happening. I figured it's one of the last large parcels in the town of Wilmington. I know we gave, whether it was large or small, tax breaks for years on that piece of property because it was agricultural. I don't believe if we were able to buy the whole thing for 3.7, and I'm understanding now that we may have to come back. My message to the select board would be, if you need to take it by eminent domain, take it by eminent domain. Go for the whole property. Don't try to buy a piece of it, and you're gonna see it develop into something else. We talk about traffic on that street. If we develop units on there, it's gonna be far worse. I believe, you know, public safety, I believe any municipal use, and I've heard here at 
town meeting. I've heard at public meetings that we don't own property here in North Wilmington. We own a large parcel right off Salem Street, and we were thinking years ago of building a high school. That being said, I'm still in favor of us purchasing this property. My message is to the select board, stand tall, take it by eminent domain. We gave all these tax breaks for years. We take it in, under our control. We should utilize that whole piece of property. It's the last great parcel in this community, and it's for multiple uses that the town could use. That's all, and I would really hope that the board would do that. I'm, I'm gonna support this article, absolutely, but I would hope when the time comes that you folks say, we're gonna grab the whole thing, take a by eminent domain, buy the whole thing, and it would be far better for the town. And we do have other large parcels of property here in North Wilmington. Take, I'm for the article, do the right thing, get the whole thing, thank you. All right, um, and when it, to, is it to clarify or correct, Mr. Hall, or are you just I, waiting to get I did wanna to just here? offer a comment. There was a, a point made earlier, which I, I believe was suggesting uh, an issue with affordable housing. I think it's important to note that the town uh, is at uh, in excess of its 10% uh, with the approval of the West Street project. So in terms of the prospect of uh, someone uh, beyond those the, that are in the, uh, in the pipeline now, there, there is not the ability for a new developer to come in and pursue uh, 40B, so-called 40B affordable housing because the town is at 10%. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hall. I'm gonna to go to Mr. De Palma, then Ms. Galezzo. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I support this article. There isn't much land left in Wilmington. The one thing that I, was, I have been concerned with is a subs fire a public safety substation up in that area. We could build it there and leave the rest of the property alone. If we don't need it right now, we don't need it. But in the long run, we're talking ice skating rink. We're talking a rec center, uh, a new DPW barn. If we need it, we have it. It's there for us. And if not, generations ahead of, uh, ahead of us will have the opportunity to determine what they want to do with it. But I strongly ask everyone to support the project. Uh, let's move forward and let's keep some land for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Ms. Glezzo. For years, we've been talking about a fire substation. This is our chance. This is the piece of land we need to make that happen. Also, Mr. Monterey, I'd like to move the question. I don't think so, out of order. <laughs> no, okay. it, Mr. McDonald is, is right. Uh, you can't speak and then move the question. Ms. Glazer, you know better than that. <laughs> Mr. Ragsdale, I'm gonna go in the front. Mr. McDonald, just, just let you know I'm passing you over just because you did already speak, but we'll get to you, but I wanna make sure that people that have not yet had the opportunity to speak get that opportunity and I'll go back to you. Mr. Ragsdale. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. David Ragsdale, 18 Marion Street. Uh, this property is going to be developed for some purpose at some point. And it's going to be much more to our liking and to the benefit of the town of Wilmington if we control what that purpose is going to be. My name's Suzanne Kroll, 21 Blueberry Lane, and this property is in my backyard. Um, as a neighbor, I would absolutely support having a fire station, a police station, so God forbid there's an emergency, they are across the street instead of having to travel 10 minutes away so that they can do their jobs to help us and keep us safe. Um, it sounds like it's just a matter of time. Would I rather have a developer or would I rather have the town, police, fire, recreational facility? For me, it's a no-brainer. Let's support the town. Let's support our police, our fire, our EMTs. Have possibilities for recreation in the future. Um, the other thing to consider, too, is already our Wildwood students, we don't have spaces for them. If a developer comes in, where are these students going to go? We don't have places for them until our new school is built. So I would absolutely support this. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. West. 
Uh, Karen West, 2 Birchwood Road, I'd like to move the question. I knew that was coming. Point of order, Mr. Uh, what is your point of order, Mr. McDonald? Um, before the speaker was even up, I had been standing here for a lengthy amount of time, and I don't think that's uh, appropriate, and I don't even think that's in order for her to be recognized over somebody that was here at the microphone before she even thought about getting up there. Mr. McDonald, you had already spoken once from the I didn't talk about the $30 million that the town will be on the hook for. Mr. McDonald, you had an opportunity to speak. I got to give everyone in this assembly an opportunity to speak before I go back and folks get second and third and fourth chances. So as has been established Mr. by my predecessors, Mr. McDonald, I am not done. As has been established by, my, by not only myself but my predecessors, we want to make sure that this is a welcoming assembly and that everyone has the opportunity to be heard and we're not making sure that the, the mic microphones are monopolized. So I make sure that folks that have not yet spoken on an article have an opportunity to speak first. Unless there is a uh, point of clarify, uh, I'm sorry, to provide an explanation or to correct an error which is pursuant to our inhabitant bylaws. So Mrs. West may have, have gotten up after you were waiting to speak and I did say that I was going to go back to you because you had been waiting but you did already have an opportunity to speak on this. So we do have a motion to move the previous question. It has been seconded. A motion to move the previous question is to end debate. It would give the maker of the main motion, which is Mr. Bendel, up to 10 minutes, if he so chooses, to address the assembly. Mr. Bendel could choose to yield his time to any other individual in the assembly. Again, a motion to move the previous question is to end debate with the exception of that addressing of the assembly. There is no debate on a motion to move the previous question. It is a two-thirds majority, but I can make that declaration by a voice vote. So if you are in favor of moving the previous question in Article 40 so, and ending debate, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. If you are opposed, say no. Voted unanimously so. So we are on the main motion uh, on Article 40, which is for $3,798,698. Mr. Bendel, uh, the floor is yours for up to 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'll very briefly just say that this is a very unique opportunity, and I encourage all of you to join us in uh, taking advantage of it. Thank you. Mr. Bendel, you have nine minutes and 40 seconds left. <laughs> I yield back. <laughs> All right, this is a two-thirds vote and I am not uh, permitted to, uh, <clears throat> to declare uh, the vote by a voice vote on this, so I would ask that the tellers take their places. Folks, we haven't had to use them yet, but please get out your purple voter cards. I think you're good, right? We're good? All right, ladies and gentlemen, on the motion on Article 40, to authorize the select board to acquire by gift, purchase, eminent domain, or otherwise all or a portion of the property or any interest therein located at 333 Andover Street and shown on assessor's map R1 as lot 21A. The motion as made by Mr. Bendel, if you are in favor of Article 40, the amount again, $3,798,698. So indicate by rising in your seats and displaying your purple voter card. No, you can be seated, sorry.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you are opposed to Article 40, please rise in your seat and display your purple voter card. Can be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, on the motion on Article 40, we had 148 in the affirmative and three in the negative. The measure passes. Mr. Moderator. Mr. McDonald. Point of order. What is your point of order? If someone was to bring this article up for reconsideration, they would need a second to that motion, correct? And the motion for reconsideration would need to be in order. Yes. Um, I would like to um, bring this article that we just voted on up for reconsideration. All right, Mr. McDonald, you did speak in opposition to this article when it was under discussion the first time. I've obtained, I've obtained new information, Mr. Moderator. Mr. McDonald, it, it, the vote literally took place 30 seconds ago. You spoke against the article, the, the measure passed. I did see that you did vote in the affirmative, and now you're making a motion for uh, reconsideration. Um, I I'm voted for it, I'm, which I'm, I'm entitled to do by law, okay? And I'm and I, 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 Mr. McDonald, Mr. Moderator, if I need to point of order. You, Mr. McDonald, I am explaining what your motion for reconsideration is, uh, why it is out of order. It is purely dilatory. As you spoke against it, you then voted for it, and now you're mo moving to reconsider. There is no possibility that there is new information uh, or a change in circumstances that has taken place within the last 30 seconds to explain that the reason for your motion for reconsideration is to be o anything other than dilatory. And so I'd like to explain the new information and why it is in order. And I'm, because I'm the math, Mr. McDonald, when I did a mathematical Mr. equation, Mr. McDonald, it comes out to $100,000 per lot times 300 lots is $30 million. Mr. These Mc people were not presented with that information. And that's why it's in order. Mr. McDonald, you're done. We're moving on to Article 46 just by way of explanation. Our inhabitant bylaws. <laughs> our inhabitant bylaws, Chapter 90, Section 10A. And yes, I'm going to bore you with an explanation of our inhabitant bylaws just so I can calm down for a second. Uh, do require that articles that are to appropriate monies for capital expenditures are drawn sequentially. 46. No, we're moving on to 46. This is the explanation. Uh, so what that means is Article 46 is uh, an article that would be an expenditure of monies for capital expenditures. So we then have to skip ahead from 40 to 46. 
before we can move on to random draw. And before we get to that, we are going to get to a presentation from our school superintendent, uh, with apologies for me for the delay in that. So we are on for Article 46, which is to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $1,500,000, more or less, to be expended under the direction of the superintendents of schools in consultation with the school committee, Wildwood School Building Committee, and the town manager for the purpose of constructing a safe and conducive learning environment, including site preparation, design costs, costs to retrofit and or build age-appropriate restrooms for pre-K and kindergarten students, costs to build age-appropriate play structures, equipping and furnishing of classrooms for pre-K and kindergarten students to be educated at the Wilmington Middle School, and all such costs incidental and related thereto to provide a safe and conducive learning environment with funding for said appropriation anticipated as follows. Raised by taxation, zero dollars. Transfer from free cash, one million five hundred thousand dollars. Transfer from stabilization, zero dollars. Borrow, zero dollars. Other, zero dollars. Or take any other action related thereto. Barb Goodwin, Lynn Leonard Lane. Hi, you open you make a motion on Article 46? Uh, no. I mo okay, I, I have a motion. Actually, I don't, okay, go ahead. There's, there's a motion to pass over yeah. uh, Article 46. Second. It has been seconded. Uh, Finance Committee recommends disapproval of this article discussion. Seeing none, we're going to call for uh, a vote. I, can I discuss? I'm sorry, yeah, yeah I'm sorry. I, um, Discussion. So I recognize the challenges with this particular um, article and when it was um, submitted in terms of it being sort of out of sequence with where things are on this project right now. Um, but I do want to raise um, a concern um, about the fact that um, the conversation and discussion in this um, assembly about the um, 545,000 that has been um, attributed to um, was shut down when people were standing in line waiting to have a conversation. Um, and I'm, I'm worried about sort of the um, approach to shutting down conversation about school investment. Uh, this has had a lot of conversation. Um, there's been so many meetings about this. And my question is, when did the bid come in for the 545,000 that got re- um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to go to Mr. Hull on the question on, on the bid. I am going to just address the, the comment about shutting down the conversation. The, the pre previous article that dealt with much of the substance that Article 46 came up with, uh, debate was ended through a motion uh, to move the previous question. It's not my decision to make. It's a, move, it's a motion that is made by somebody that is a part of this assembly. It does require a two-thirds majority, and there was that. So the assembly did decide that they had heard enough and that they were ready to vote. So I'm so. learning some things through this actual meeting, and there were people standing in line before the person made the motion to move the question. And I'm not sure why those people weren't honored in terms of their um, sequence in, in making um, a, you know, commentary. If, if that was what happened, that certainly was not my intent. It, That's okay. it can be, I just can be difficult like, to keep track because yep. certainly there was a lot of commentary and, and four different microphones to keep track of. So certainly that was, that was not my intent. Uh, but when a motion to move, move the previous question is, is made, I, I am required to trust the judgment of the meeting if they're ready to make a decision. Uh, to Mr. Hall on the timing of the bid received. Uh, there were two elements to the bid, filed sub-bids, which are required under this, which is uh, essentially for the plumbing work. Uh, the bid came in uh, last week. Uh, the general contractor bids uh, came in on the 27th of this month, so whatever that day was, Thursday, I believe. Um, and to that, uh, just as a follow-up, that's where I think the, I was surprised by the motion for the Finance Committee to move that through so quickly because um, clearly it was cut, like very new information. It hadn't been shared publicly and um, their conversation was very quickly moved forward. That leads us to this where um, we if, if I could just interject very briefly, I should have announced uh, after... Um, uh, after squaring away the motion uh, for discussion. The Finance Committee, and it is in your booklet, did recommend approval on that. They did meet just prior to today's meeting to reconsider given the new information. And Mr. Doherty, you can confirm that the recommendation remains approval? Yes, it does. Approval for? 
I'm, I'm sorry, uh, for disapproval on 46, yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and I think what we were trying to talk about is sort of whether or not um, there was opportunity after these new bids came in for, you know, things to, that we, we valued engineered a lot out of that project. And, um, and I think, you know, now we have new information and it wasn't, um, there wasn't a lot of availability to discuss that. Um, on, on this, um, you know, I think, I, I just wanna raise that I think there has been um, a feeling in town meetings that maybe like there isn't opportunities for full conversations about schools and that anything with schools have really targeted financial constraints and, and haven't in, you know, been sort of um, considered um, or allowed for discussion about these things. And I think that's why we're seeing articles come forward like this that are sort of out of place. And, but, but it's because the conversations aren't allowed to happen and there's concern in terms of um, the approach and conversations that boards have been having um, about really scrutinizing any spending for the schools. So I wanna raise that as, you know, I'm hopeful that, you know, we can continue to participate in the conversations and that we can be a little open and understand that, that there's concerns in the community in terms of the approaches for capital and the approaches for operating and how we're um, scrutinizing school budgets and that, that I wanna make sure that there's an openness to um, exploring conversations that are non-financially related um, with respect to schools. Thank you. We're gonna to go to Ms. Galezzo and then to Ms. Benelli in the back. So just for a little clarification, uh, the reason why I asked for Dr. Brandon and the town manager to get up and speak on this is to make sure there was collaboration between the town and the school. Mr. Brand sat there and addressed the audience and said he was quite satisfied with um, the plan going forward. I don't understand why we keep need to debate it. If the schools are okay with this, in the school committee, Mr. Ragsdale said the same. I'm just a little kind of shocked that, you know, we're, we're having the same discussion once again. I'd like to respond right, to that. If, if um, you're, you're limited just to provide an explanation or correct an error, just okay. within that narrow scope. So I'd like to respond to that because I think it was like we we fully back a school administration in their perspectives. I think the problem from a citizen perspective is that a, com, a, a question was raised about the specifics of the plan, and it was reframed to um, the administration to say, "Does this meet your needs?" Which is not the citizen question, which was, "How is it different than what was presented to the public?" And so I think there was information that was asked that wasn't provided. Um, and and it, it's fine, it's water under the bridge in terms of moving forward. Everyone wants this project to move forward. My commentary is concern about um, the lack of openness or ability, I, I don't know why um, commentary was shut down so quickly on that article based on the number of people um, that have been involved in the process and that um, would want to understand more about information that just came out yesterday. So that's where my commentary comes from. Okay, Ms. Benelli. Um, did I hear you properly um, that the Wildwood the <laughs> Wildwood Building School Committee update would include an update on the interim project? That that, that whatever is in Article Two that we voted agree does that include uh, addressing the interim project? So right after this article, Dr. Brand is going to do, go into his his uh, report that was on Article Two. So before we vote, no, no. After we, we're voting okay. on this, can I move that we get that presentation before we vote? Uh, yeah, there, there, there is an actual question, so we, we can't go forward until we've dealt with the, the motion to pass over uh, Article 46. Okay, it, so I would urge our citizens to not, um, to vote this down, just so that we can hear the presentation, and then we can vote on it with that information. Is that fair? So regardless of how the vote on Article 46 goes, we're going into Dr. Brand's presentation. But we're passing over this article. So if Dr. Brand presents information, I'm like, hey, can we get another $100,000 to resolve something? I don't have that opportunity because Article 6 is no longer on the table. Am I understanding how this works properly? If, there's, if there happens to be new information or a change in circumstances, one okay, could make you. a motion to reconsider. Okay, thank but you for clarifying that there's still a mechanism for citizens after we get the information. Thank you. Mr. Hall. Uh, to, to the question about transparency, um, you know, it, it sounds like some folks are perhaps new to the process, but 
clearly there has been, in, in certainly my estimation, transparency. All these uh, meetings of the uh, Wildwood School Building Committee have been public. I can't cite the specific dates when those meetings occurred, but I believe that at some point in the later meetings uh, of the Wilmington uh, School Building Committee, that there was discussion about uh, the change in the scope of work. Uh, then separately from that, uh, throughout the month of February, uh, the, the Finance Committee reviews each of the town budgets, all the various departments, the school budget. All those meetings are, are publicly posted. Very few people, if anyone, attends the meetings. They're also covered by WCTV. So, you know, with all due respect, uh, there is, in my estimation, the opportunity for people to hear about these, um, these projects. Certainly people have busy schedules, I understand that, but to suggest that we're not being transparent I don't think is fair. Uh, Ms. Sullivan. Uh, Suzanne Sullivan, 60 Long Street. Um, so I just want everybody to understand, and, and I want to make sure I understand myself, that what's on the floor right now is to pass over this article. Correct. Correct. And then after we vote on that, there'll be a presentation by the superintendent. So the, the superintendent's presentation is more broadly on the Wildwood School Building Committee and mm -hmm. the status that it's run primarily within the MSBA process. Mm -hmm. Well, I personally am somebody that actually pays attention a lot to what goes on in town. And I'm not saying that there's not transparency. Um, I don't have children anymore in the school systems. But I would generally like to look at this article afterwards. I don't know what the big deal is. It's just, you know, I mean, it takes more time to actually do an article to reconsider. I would suggest that we just table the discussion on this article until after we see the superintendent's presentation. I would appreciate that. I'm not constantly going to meetings, every single meeting, and hearing everything that's going on at the school. I have all the other stuff that I do. So I would personally like to hear that presentation and then look at this article. So right. I'm Ms. asking the Ms. body. I, I believe I heard you say you wish to lay this on the table. So yeah, so I'm, a... I'm asking the body, okay. this body, not to, to go over this, to pass over okay. this article. So. To lay this article on the table, it would temporarily move us on the metaphorical table. What would mm -hmm. happen is then we would then move into Dr. Brand's report. Mm -hmm. We could then, someone could make a motion to remove from the table or take from the table. So then we would on, be on further discussion on the motion to pass over Article 46. So, is that your intent? Yes. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor to table Article 46. Is there a second? Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Does everyone understand what is what the motion on, on the floor is? It's a motion to lay on the table. Discussion is permitted. Essentially, it hits pause on Article 46. I thought we had a motion to take. We do, and this disposes of this temporarily. So what would happen is if a motion to lay Article 46 on the table passes, we essentially hit pause. We then hear Dr. Brandt's presentation. And then after that presentation, somebody could make a motion to take from the table Article 46. Mr. Monterey, we'll be right point back of order. Mr. Carr. Could we get some clarification from legal? Now you have two motions out there um, on this, please. Mr. Rich. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I, I think there is a little bit of confusion because we have a motion to pass over, and then we have a motion to lay on the table. The, mo the Because you have the pending motion to pass over, this motion to lay on the table would be laying on the table the motion to pass over, not the not the main motion as uh, that that could have been made. There was no the, the there was no actual affirmative motion made on the article. Instead, it was a motion to pass over. If 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 the voters would want to have further discussion on it, they could vote down the motion to pass over, and then it might be appropriate to then lay the article on the table to allow for the presentation. I, I, it's a, a little um, concerning to lay on the table a motion to pass over. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, I, I, will pay, I, I can withdraw that motion. I just want to make sure that this article can be viewed by this body after the superintendent's presentation. Okay, so I'm going to 
Declared as the general consent of the meeting to allow Ms. Sullivan leave to withdraw her motion to table. So you have a motion to pass over Article 46. Further discussion? Mr. Daugherty? Um, this article um, starts a process at 1.5 million with the state law. You need an OPM, which is an owner project manager. And then you, they, they have to go to bid. Then from bid, you have to go to get a contractor and a designer. And another two, two things to go out to bid. So it takes a long time to get those bids in, interview the people, and get it approved. So if you want to have things done at the middle school, we could have them done for September of 2024. You know, we want them done this year. We've already approved, you know, if, you, if we went with this article, it would, it would delay it probably a year. Right. You know, we already have an article that we've approved to get the work done so the kids can have their bathrooms and everything else this year. You know, why are we delaying it? You know, what we need is action. And that's why I, I, I made the motion to pass over. You know, we don't need this. It creates more, it's more cumbersome at this figure than the figure we have. Thank you. Further discussion on 46. I see none, we're gonna call for a vote on a motion to pass over Article 46. If you are in favor of passing over Article 46, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. If you're opposed, say no. Motion to pass over passes unanimously. Uh, Dr. Brand, uh, at long last, you are up for your presentation of the Wildwood School Building Committee. I hope you're not disappointed with this presentation. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot on the table here. Uh, well, I'll wait for it to come up. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, we did have good morning in the uh, beginning parts, but I know it's afternoon now, so we're going to shift to that. But good afternoon to residents who are here and for those that may be uh, at home watching. My name is Glenn Brand, Superintendent of Schools. It's my privilege and pleasure to provide uh, residents with an update on the Wildwood School itself. There are really, as you are getting a sense, uh, two very important, uh, somewhat connected, but certainly two very important projects related to the Wildwood and uh, over the next number of slides, it's my uh, intent to provide an update to the community at large, uh, obviously recognizing that this is really very important on a number of different levels. Well, the focus of this report uh, is centered on the Wildwood staff, students, and families. It really represents so much more, I believe, for the Wilmington community at a critical juncture for the future of not just the Wildwood on an interim basis, but also with the need to look towards the longer-term view of our school system. Next slide, please. Let me begin first uh, with an update on what we're referring to as the interim plan, has been mentioned here a couple of times uh, in previous articles. Next slide. For a number of years now, attention has increasingly focused on the age of our elementary school facilities throughout the community. The growing concerns have particularly centered on the Wildwood School as it has faced ongoing struggles with its operations as our oldest operating school in the town built in 1955. Following the unfortunate development that led to an oil leak as a result of human error from the company contracted to filling the oil tanks for heating, it became clear that moving out of the school facility during this time of the oil cleanup was absolutely in the best interests of everyone. In February of 2022, there was a joint decision made between senior leadership members of the town and school department that for a variety of reasons, it was not in the best interest of anyone for the school to reopen. This decision placed us and the town on a path that was always considered a possibility, but now represented a real challenge, and we soon thereafter enlisted the assistance of the Wildwood Building Committee to help identify options. The decision to do what is possible to seek ways to establish sound teaching and learning conditions for our Wildwood community are highlighted by, I believe, four fundamental key factors. They are indeed our youngest students throughout the district, and even though their time in the Early Childhood Center, whether that be at the Boutwell or the Wildwood, is short, they are most certainly our most vulnerable. And indeed, 
And an early investment in these young citizens of this community not only is something that we owe to our staff and families, but also serves as something that represents the best possible start to their formal education of our students, which down the road is something that benefits everyone. Next slide. Keeping in mind that by the time that the decision to close the Wildwood School was made last year, the town already knew that we were accepted into the MSBA, or Mass School Building Authority Building Program. And therefore, we knew that we needed a short-term or an interim option to locate the Wildwood students and programs. In a hurry, we had to decide on splitting up the Wildwood into three different schools. Anything but ideal, but we had no choice. And that's where they remain this year. To explore the possibilities, we explored, uh, sorry, we secured the assistance of Doran Whittier, third party consultant, who knows schools and school facilities and knows how to understand the possibilities for a community. They scoured our current building capacity, looked at possibilities outside the district as well, such as renting or leasing corporate space, and explored within our school system even the possibility of grade level shifts in order to accommodate the Wildwood students. There were three challenges with all of the many options, and there were many, 16 I believe in fact, that were identified. Those challenges included the overall costs. Some of those options, for those that may have been following that work, uh, would have noted that those exceeded uh, 10, 15 million dollars in some cases. The majority of them, uh, certainly possible with additional funding, would also take time to completion. Something that we felt uh, was certainly a factor um, as we were contending with this situation. Many required such, for example, temporary classrooms or modular classrooms that could not be ordered uh, and delivered immediately. The lead time, uh, well over a year away. And as mentioned, some of the solutions involved the disruption of other school communities throughout the district or would involve disruptions because a plan would require grade level reconfigurations. It was as a direct result of these challenges and with the benefit of having additional insight into the spatial capacity at a couple of our schools particularly at the middle school and the high school, as a result of the work with our consultant, Doran Whittier, that I recommended to the Wildwood Building Committee that we explore an additional option that would be far from ideal, but perhaps could uh, yield more benefits. Next slide. There are many problems with the current configuration of having the Wildwood split over three different schools that include the Shawshine, the West, and the Woburn Street. Most importantly, this arrangement has impacted our staff tremendously and our students and families. Thanks to the unbelievable hard work to the staff, as well as Ms. Bissell, our principal at the Wildwood, things have worked, but they are not sustainable over the next five years until a new school facility can be built. The plan that is now underway, which has been highlighted a couple of times here this morning, and which can be finalized with the support of the related article, which happened uh, earlier today, is to divide the Wildwood across two locations, immediately across the street from each other, that includes the West as well as the middle school. The plan includes at the West housing five classrooms with approximately 75 to 80 students in pre-K and K. And at the middle school, there will be seven classrooms that are currently planned with an approximate and anticipated enrollment of between 100 to 110. Next slide, please. This is an image of the lower level or the first floor of the middle school, which has been identified for the relocation of those students that I just mentioned in the portion of the Wildwood and highlights the area of the building that's planned for those seven classrooms as well as the use of the Library Media Center. The resources from the Library Media Center that are currently located there are being relocated to another part of the school so that the middle school students still can have access to them and plans are underway to recreate the, that Library Media Center that was in place at the original Wildwood School where students will have access to library materials appropriate for their age and also receive instruction in art, music, and the similar programming that they had at the Wildwood. The most significant cost associated with this project is to construct a set of age-appropriate bathrooms in a space that has been identified uh, in, within room 155, for those that are taking a look at that image. Currently on each floor of the middle school, in case residents might be wondering, there is only one set of bathrooms, and those, of course, have to be used by students who are 12, 13 years old, something that's not appropriate, uh, certainly, to co-mingle with students of the ages of three and four, sometimes five, uh, for those uh, students at the Wildwood. Next slide. With the benefit of time to further consider this plan, we believe there are numerous benefits, some of which were mentioned earlier today, uh, to have this arrangement with the Wildwood being co-hosted at the West Intermediate School 
and the middle school. Most of these have been mentioned, so in the interest of time, I think I'll, I'll proceed. Next slide. There are indeed challenges. No plan, uh, this plan that's far from bringing everyone back together under one roof is, is not ideal. But it should be pointed out um, that there are still some challenges with this. Uh, it still requires Wildwood staff to be split across multiple sites, the west and the middle school, but far better from the current arrangement that they're in right now. Uh, it does result in, a pro in some of the uh, middle school staff, approximately six to eight, to need to travel from room to room to deliver their classes, not ideal but something that we believe can be sustained for these next number of years. It does create the need, as mentioned, for age-appropriate restroom facilities, and the need for the relocation of the library media center also has been mentioned. Next slide. It is not lost upon my team or the school committee the fact that this proposed plan comes with costs, and has been mentioned a number of times this morning. But the costs associated with this project are indeed significantly less than the various other options that were identified as mentioned earlier, and I believe it's equally important and worth noting that a return to the Wildwood School following the oil spill would most certainly have led to additional costs to the town and the residents in order to keep that facility running, which would be, or will be, as you'll see in just a moment, approximately five more years. Energy costs, replacement of a boiler system that certainly has, uh, was in need, and repair of any other future roof and window leaks, and other system failures that our Department of Public Buildings and Mr. Hooper has repeatedly warned about in the past. So where does that bring us for uh, next steps? Uh, next slide, please. Um, certainly uh, to start, I want to thank uh, Town Manager Hall, Mr. Hooper, Mr. Magaldi for their continued support of the efforts around putting into place the pieces of this interim plan. Things are moving along. And with the support coming out of town meeting today, we'll be able to move forward with the bid documents related to the construction specifically for those restaurant facilities and other costs necessary to bring about this plan uh, to open school in the fall of 2023. Construction will indeed take a, a period of time that is planned for over the summer and it is scheduled to begin immediately when school uh, lets out. Uh, and if things with that timeline can progress uh, according to the timeline right now, we believe that indeed we'll be able to open school for Wildwood students and most certainly as well the middle school uh, in the fall. So that is the interim uh, piece of the Wildwood um, and shifting, next slide please, to the uh, Massachusetts School Building Authority or MSBA. <clears throat> this is the second important project as many are aware unfolding concurrently with the Wildwood School and that's this construction program that we are now a part of with the MSBA and I should note thanks to the incredible and overwhelming support of residents back almost a year ago on March 8, 2022 that made it possible for us to move forward in this program. It's an important, uh, I believe, as well, to take this opportunity to provide residents with a brief update on things as they really do begin to ramp up with this plan. Uh, just first worthy note, <clears throat> the foundation of this current project really began a number of years ago as a result of the town's master plan that was completed in 2017-2018. A particular importance within that plan was the clear recommendation to the community of Wilmington and supported by the facilities master plan committee that school consolidation should be pursued in this town. Next slide. This recommendation makes complete sense and is grounded upon the key findings that were identified in the facilities master plan that are associated with four specific factors that define the current state of our schools at the elementary level in town. First off, enrollment. The current enrollment within the elementary schools in Wilmington is not projected to significantly change within the planning horizon. However, with the exception of the middle school and high school, those schools are really at capacity and the, as a system and they cannot easily adapt to short-term uh, shifts in grade level in, uh, enrollment. Second, transitions. As many know who have had children move through or are moving through the school system, we have a lot of schools in town. This is a lot of change for the town's youngest citizens and uh, with those transitions and certainly instability is hard and far less than ideal. Third, operating so, so many smaller elementary schools absolutely is not as efficient or optimal in terms of the operations of services on multiple levels. And fourth, perhaps, perhaps as equally important as all of the above, given the age of our elementary schools, which you can see on the slide here, while overall indeed well maintained by the town over these years, they simply are not built to support the needs of teaching and learning 
in current times. Anyone who has had a chance to visit a more contemporary school facility built within, say, the last five to 10 years can easily conclude that and see the differences in terms of what a newer school facility can provide. Next slide. It is directly because of this plan and these recommendations that the town and the school department signaled very clearly to the MSBA when applying that, it, that as a community we want to explore and need to explore school consolidation as a possible solution to improve the conditions not only for the Wildwood but potentially other schools throughout the district. Should we be able to realize consolidation as a community, there will be a number of key benefits highlighted that include fewer schools in town, fewer schools that can, can, can accommodate more grade levels at minimizing our transitions, and all of our elementary schools uh, with fewer buildings will lead to less time to complete repairs and or renovations. There are a number of key partners in this project, and that's the good news associated with, of course, being in, in the MSBA project. It is a very big deal for any community indeed. This community knows that well through the process of partnering with MSBA in the construction of this facility. But we are in this place because of the support of residents, and we have recently demonstrated to them that the high school that was built here indeed underscores the fact that Wilmington is a great partner on so many levels. And speaking of partners, this path that we are on now, at the beginning stages of this project, will only be possible and only be uh, built around a number of key partnerships. And I just want to take a quick moment to highlight what these are as we get started with this project. Next slide. First, there is the Wildwood School Building Committee, with members noted here. Because of the fact that this project holds the potential to impact multiple school communities throughout the town, the careful and deliberate decision was made to ensure that we have much broader representation of stakeholders, including from both sides of town. Next slide. Second key partnership in this project is the town's owner, owner's project manager, or OPM. Working with the MSBA requires a very methodical process of ensuring that highly qualified firms apply for the various important roles in a school building project. Our first hire as a community was with our OPM. These are the folks that I want to thank for their many hours of work behind the scenes in reviewing applications and interviewing potential firms. A total of eight firms applied to serve as Wilmington's OPM for this project. Back in October, in late, uh, late October, early November, SMMA was selected as the OPM for the Wildwood project. Next slide. A third partner, Ship just being formed, although not new to the town, is that of our project designer. In March, Mr. Ragsdale, Vice Chair of the School Committee, Mr. Hull, and myself met with representatives from the MSBA Designer Selection Panel to review three proposals for the to serve as the designer of the Wildwood Project. After interviewing and joint questioning with members of the MSBA board, the firm Doran Whittier, who also was the designer of the high school that you now sit in currently, was selected for the project. Next slide. Our community at large, of course, is a key partner in such a project, and it will be throughout. Not only will this ultimately include a future vote to fund a potential project, but far more engagement and opportunities for members of this community to get involved, should they wish, way before that time comes. The first and vitally important opportunity comes with what is called educational visioning. It is important that we think big, and give us a community pause to develop our vision for what it is that we want for the Wilmington Public Schools and the future of schooling in Wilmington, particularly at the elementary level. This will be big picture thinking and provide an immense opportunity for us to think critically about where it is that we want to go as a community in the years ahead. Next slide. In our conversations with Doran Whittier last week, they made it clear to us that this process needs to get going very soon. And they, as well as our OPM, have strongly urged us to think strategically about where we can ensure stakeholders are included throughout the town. This slide represents current thinking around who we want on our educational visioning team. This will amount to a lot of work and certainly time and energy from the folks who agree to sign up, but we will need them to be a part of this process. And an important one that will get underway very, soon, very quickly um, please stay tuned for more information if you might be interested in it. This, I anticipate that information, uh, as soon as the end of next week, will be possible to invite people to, uh, to be, get involved. Next slide. We are really on the ramp, the on-ramp now with this project, and I think that that's important to point out. And we are heading towards the feasibility study, the next up in the process that will occur in the spring and summer. 
Highlights of the work include um, a number of facets that will explore existing conditions throughout all of our elementary schools, explore the options that are going to be considered, including school consolidation, and identify possible building sites and locations if the Wildwood site currently is not deemed to be most appropriate. Next slide. The slide provides additional information about the feasibility stage or the module. This is uh, the term that MSBA uses for this. Um, and I will point out the last key bullet there on the slide. The culmination of this specific module will be the recommendation of the most cost-effective and educationally appropriate solution for the elementary population in Wilmington, which will be presented to the MSB, MSBA for consideration. Next slide. Next two slides provide just a really quick broad brush overview of the process. <clears throat> These slides have been provided uh, by uh, Doran Whittier for us. Provide you with an overview of the next number of months leading to an, uh, when a new building is anticipated, which as has been mentioned a few times is expected to be uh, in 2028. You can also see here that the local project funding for whatever is developed out of this process and is deemed most appropriate would be in December of 2024. This would be the next town meeting vote connected with this project. Next slide. Next slide, please. A lot, of, a lot of data, a lot of information on this slide, um, and I will, I should say, I certainly will make this uh, PowerPoint available for anyone who's interested in it. It provides more detail, a lot of detail, actually, uh, here, but I did want to share it with you to highlight the fact that through this process, there will be also numerous public meetings planned. So even if a community member is not on the Wildwood Building Committee, or perhaps hasn't, doesn't have the opportunity or ability to sign up to be a part of the visioning committee that I mentioned a moment ago, I think it's important to point out that there will absolutely be multiple opportunities for community members to provide input and feedback on what is being developed in this process. Your voice and your involvement counts, no matter whether you do or don't have children in the school system. Next slide. I'll close with this, which you all recognize that this is indeed a very big and very important project for the community that will also necessitate, of course, down the road, local financial support. But we want to do the best that we can to make sure that the members of our community can stay informed, should they wish, in this process. We have already established a strong presence on our district website where all of the related documents to the Wildwood projects, both of them, are being compiled, and that will continue with presentations, including this one today. Thank you for your time uh, today, for your recognition of the importance of this project and the community need with the overwhelming support that you've provided a year ago, as well as your continued support through the project as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Dr. Brand. Uh, we have uh, only our random draw articles left, as I had uh, stated at uh, the beginning of today's proceedings. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask for a motion to recess for 15 minutes so people can get up and stretch. Uh, the uh, Wilmington Public Schools Choral and Theater Support Group, CATS, is still selling uh, refreshments in the cafeteria. So I have a motion to uh, recess to uh, 148, more or less. Uh, it has been seconded. All those in favor of taking a 15-minute break, say aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Voted unanimous. <laughs>
make your way to your seats. He's, well, he's gone. <laughs> you can grab it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the remaining articles are all to be selected by random draw. They are articles 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, and 47. Uh, we will hear first on Article 41, which is to see if the town will vote pursuant to Chapter 64, Section 64.1 of the Inhabitant Bylaws to rename the second floor conference room at the Wilmington Memorial Library the Christina Stewart Room and to have a sign installed to commemorate the same or take any other action related thereto, Mr. Nussbaum. Mr. Moderator, Jeffrey Nussbaum, Eight Patches Pond Lane and representing the Wilmington Memorial Library Board of Trustees. I move that the town vote pursuant to Chapter 64, Section 6-1 of the Inhabitant Bylaws to rename the second floor conference room at the Wilmington Memorial Library, the Christina Stewart Room, and to have a sign installed to commemorate the same. Thank you, Mr. Nussbaum. I'll accept that as a main motion. Is there a second? second. Motion has been made and seconded by about 35 people. <laughs> Finance <laughs> Committee recommends approval. Of Article 41 discussion, Mr. Nussbaum. On behalf of the Wilmington Memorial Library Board of Trustees, I would like to ask town meeting to name the library program conference room in honor of our library director, Christina Stewart. Mrs. Stewart is retiring after 27 years as the dedicated and highly respected director of our town library. As a library trustee and a frequent library user, I think of the excellence Mrs. Stewart has fostered in our library and the many changes she has driven to keep the library more than relevant but essential to our town. The library has embraced technology with computers, internet services, and online programs. Mrs. Stewart had led, has led multiple library makeovers, improving its use of limited space at limited cost to the town through donations fundraising and bequests. Under Tina Stewart's guidance, the library has become so much more than books, providing over a thousand programs each year on a wide range of interests for adults and children. As we engage in enthusiastic debate at town meeting, I'm reminded of the library's month-long set of programs on civility, where we learned to listen better and treat each other with greater respect. Through Mrs. Stewart's leadership, the library is a welcoming and friendly place for all. We thank Tina for her 49 years of service to the Wilmington Memorial Library and ask for your vote in support of this article. Thank you. the discussion on Article 41. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of renaming uh, the second floor conference room at the Wilmington Memorial Library, the Christina Stewart Room, uh, on Article 41, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Didn't think so. Unanimous. Next up is Article 47. <clears throat> All right, Article 47, to see if the town will vote to amend Section 4.1.9 of the Wilmington Zone Zoning Bylaw, which currently reads as, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see two different uh, Section 4.1.9 
uh, fair bazaars, antique shows, and carnivals uh, on the screen above me and in your warrant. Uh, the top one is as the current, as the zoning bylaws currently stand, and the bottom is as it is uh, proposed to be amended as follows. Uh, you will note that on uh, the fifth line in your warrant booklet, uh, the words that start special permit from the Board of Appeals provided such uses, the amended version, or the, uh, the version of this proposed to be amended uh, would strike special permit from the Board of Appeals provided such uses with the words, the select board provided such use. Uh, Mr. Giroux. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Patrick Giroux, 19 Brattle Street. I move that the town will vote to amend section 4.1.9 of the Wilmington Zoning Bylaw, which currently reads as 4.1.9, fairs, bazaars, antique shows, and carnivals. Mr. Giroux, does the remainder of your motion read as it does in the booklet? Yes, sir. I will accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee uh, met just prior to uh, today's uh, proceedings. Uh, Mr. Doherty, what is the Finance Committee's recommendation on Article 47? Disapproval. Planning Board recommends approval of Article 47. Discussion, Mr. Giroux. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I have the great pleasure of chairing the Wilmington 4th of July Committee, and I stand here today seeking support to modify the process in which fairs, bazaars, antique shows, and carnivals are permitted in the town. I am familiar with the town's current process for approving a carnival and the measures both the town and 4th of July Committee undergo to ensure a safe and fun annual tradition that many residents look forward to year after year. Annually, the committee meets with town officials to review the plans for the celebration. Attending this meeting are members of the Fire Department, Police Department, Department of Public Works, Health Department, Building Department, Town Manager, and more. It is at this meeting that any concerns about the conduct of the event are addressed. In addition to the planning and review, currently an applicant needs approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit in order to conduct a carnival on town-owned land. That board has the purview of approving the hours of operation and number of days of the carnival per section 4.1.8 of the town zoning bylaw. Finally, annually, the committee presents a request to the select board for use of the town common in the vicinity. That request details the days and hours of operation of the celebration. Our request is to modify and streamline the process to grant the permitting authority to the select board which would conduct a hearing that the public could attend and participate in. Thank you. Further discussion on Article 47. Mr. Mellorani. Paul Mellorani, 176 Middlesex Ave. Um, could the Finance Committee clarify why they uh, want disapproval? And could we also hear from the town manager on this? Um, in discussions this morning, we're going through, um, whether it be through an appointed board or um, elected board, and we found it would be more safer to go through a, an appointed board than an elected board. So, that's why. Mr. Hall? I think uh, in, in, in either case, uh, there's going to have to be the same level of due diligence, uh, certainly in terms of the Board of Appeals, uh, one of the distinctions is uh, for a special permit, it requires uh, a four-fifths uh, approval, where, as I understand it, if this was to be changed to uh, approval by the Board of Selectmen, it would require a majority vote. Uh, uh, you know, other than that, um, I think, you know, the keys to whichever body is asked to authorize uh, these types of events, uh, th there's going to be a uh, requirement to be mindful of any abutters uh, and uh, other issues that may impact uh, either town departments or or the uh, the surrounding area. For the discussion on Article 47, <clears throat> Mr. Neville. Chris Neville, 3 Franklin Ave. Uh, I see eight members of the Finance Committee five members of the Board of Selectmen, I know members of the school committee are here today, all who volunteer their own time, put a lot of time into town politics, trying to do the right thing for the town of Wilmington. Pat Giroux is no exception. He spends countless hours running, I think, 
the, the 4th of July committee alone, he probably spends 40 hours that week alone taking his own vacation time to help things run smoothly. Uh, I have complete and full trust in Pat's ability to make sure things are run correctly. We still have a governing board, the Board of Selectmen, that can make that decision as to whether or not what he's asking is fair and reasonable for the town. I really don't see how there can be any opposition to making sure this process that's been going on for 35 or more years, how many years, Jack? 40 some odd years, it's still gonna be under the purview of the Board of Selectmen if there are issues that can be heard. I, I think this is a no-brainer, thank you. Further discussion on Article 47? Mr. McCoy. Yeah, thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I support the young gentleman here, Mr. Giroux. I think it does come before the Board of Selectmen. You might as well keep it under one roof. It just makes perfect sense. I remember serving on the board for a long time, and I give credit to Mike Newhouse. At one time, I forget, the manager could help me. The bar, we were just about gonna lose the opportunity to have 4th of July. He had a great idea, and we imposed that, and the 4th of July festivities did take place that year. And that was on the Board of Selectmen maybe a dozen years ago. So it's under one roof. I think it's a great opportunity to keep, to make this change. I support it. It's just, it's a no brainer. It makes common sense. Thank you. Seeing no further comment on Article 47, I will call it to a vote. If you are in favor of Article 47 passing as written in the warrant booklet to amend section 4.1.9 of the Wilmington Zoning Bylaw, so indicate by saying aye. Opposed say no. Okay. Uh, we are going to have to uh, call for a standing vote. This does require a two thirds majority. So uh, I'm going to ask the tellers to take their places. Yeah, it's right up in the corner. <laughs> All right, so if you are in favor of Article 47 passing as written in the warrant booklet, so indicate by rising in your seats and displaying your purple voter card. You can be seated.
Thank you for your patience. If you are opposed to Article 47 passing, please rise in your seat and display your purple voter card. Ladies and gentlemen, the vote on Article 47 is as follows, 100 in the affirmative, 5 in the negative, the measure passes. <clears throat> Next up is Article 42. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the subject property of Article 42 is on a map on page 23 in your booklet. To see if the town will vote to authorize a transfer, the transfer or of the care, custody, management, and control of a certain parcel of land owned by the town of Wilmington here and after described to the selectmen of the town of Wilmington said land having been determined to be no longer needed for any municipal purpose and for the express purpose of conveying the same. All in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 30B and further that the selectmen be and hereby authorized to grant and convey such interest in the land as is owned by the town of Wilmington and for the express purpose of constructing a municipal turnaround for Polk Street, formerly Cedar Street, upon such terms and conditions as shall be determined by the selectmen in accordance with Chapter 3, Section 16 of the Bylaws of the Inhabitants of the Town of Wilmington Revised. <coughs> Said parcel and interest in is described as a portion of map six, parcels 33 and 34, more particularly described as lots 281, 282, 283, 2,284, as shown as a plan of land entitled Wilmington Gardens Edition, recorded with the Middlesex North Registry of Deeds Plan Book 26, Plan 36, and containing approximately 10,000 square feet of land for the sum no less than $5,000, or take any other action related to thereto. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this article calls for the dis disposition of town-owned land as a condition precedent, a condition that needs to occur prior to an affirmative vote on Article 42, the town would need to declare the land surplus to the needs of the town. Mr. Hull, what is your declaration of surplus? <clears throat> this uh, property is not declared surplus. Okay, in that case, I would entertain a motion to pass over Article 42. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Discussion on the motion to pass over Article 42. Right, we're on discussion. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of passing over Article 42, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously.
We're on Article 44. Article 44, to see if the town will vote to accept the following, that the police department range and firearms training facility located in North Wilmington on a parcel of town-owned land known as Abigail's Island be named the Officer Lawrence L. Redding Firearms Training Facility, Mr. Shalafor. <clears throat> Paul L. Shalafor, 48 Hopkins Street. Um, I would like to see if the town will vote to accept that the police department range and firearms training facility located at North Wilmington on a parcel of town-owned land known as Abigail's Island be named the Officer Lawrence L. Redding Firearms Training Facility. Larry Redding is a 1964 graduate of Wilmington High School. And Mr. Shalford, does the remainder of your motion read as it does in the booklet? It does, but I'd like to use that as the, as the, con uh, the content of my public Proceed. remarks. Um, uh, Larry Redding is a 1964 graduate of Wilmington High School, a decorated U.S. Army Special Forces veteran of the Vietnam War, a former Massachusetts State Police Trooper, a retired Wilmington police officer, and a fo former longtime resident of the town. Officer Redding, during his tenure with the police department, was a fierce advocate of specialized training for police officers in the fields of tactics, officer safety, firearms and physical fitness. He was instrumental in transitioning the police department from revolvers to semi-automatic sidearms in 1986, one of the first departments in the Commonwealth to do so. The following year, he was the driving force in the department obtaining its first firearms range. Simultaneous to his time as a Wilmington police officer, he was also a decorated member of the Northeast Massachusetts Law Enforcement Council's Regional Tactical Police Force and a founding member of its Special Operations Unit Officer Redding retired in 1999 after suffering a traumatic line of duty injury in 1997 that was brought about and exacerbated by a previous unrelated line of duty injury. This being done in recognition of Officer Larry Redding's many years of dedicated service to the town, I will take any action related thereto. Thank you, Mr. Shalfour. I'll you. accept that as the main motion. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 44. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we're going to call for a vote on Article 44. If you are in favor of uh, renaming the uh, Police Department Range and Firearms Training Facility located in North Wilmington on a parcel of land, of town owned land known as Abigail's Island, to be the Officer L. Redding Firearms Training Facility, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Voted unanimously. Uh, Article 43. Article 43. To see if the town will vote to request the state legislature to authorize Joanne Riccardelli to have her results for the 2022 and 2023 Massachusetts Civil Service Firefighter Exam be allowed for employment without regard to the applicant's age as a firefighter in the town of Wilmington. Notwithstanding the provisions of the general laws, rules, and regulations to the contrary regulating the age of the applicant, provided she meets all other requirements, she shall be eligible for certification and appointed to the Wilmington Fire Department by the appointing authority regardless of her age or take any other action related thereto. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, my name is Joanne Riccadelli, H. Chapman Ave. Um, thank you for hearing me today. So I am... If we, we do need to hear a motion, so if okay. you start by saying, I moved out and start reading your article or just... Yep, so, um, well, I'm here because I'm seeking the opportunity to join the Wilmington Fire Department. I would like to see if the town will vote to request the state, le state I, legislature. Does the remainder of your motion read as it does in the booklet? Yes, it does. There we go. Is there a second? Further discussion? Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 43. Ms. Riccardelli, you apologize for interrupting. Continue. Nope, I just wanted to say that I'm hoping that uh, I have the opportunity to serve here. Thank you. Further discussion on Article 43? Seeing none, a call for the vote. If you are in favor of Article 43 to request the state legislature authorize Joanne Riccardelli to have her results from the 2022 and 2023 Massachusetts Civil Service Firefighter Exam be allowed for employment without regard to the applicant's age as a firefighter in the town of Wilmington, so indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed say no. Voted uh, and unanimously so. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the last article. I thank you for bearing with us. We are on Article 45.
Article 45, to see if the town will vote to amend the action taken under Article 3 of the special town meeting held on November 19th, 2022 to appropriate the sum of $36,880,766, more or less by reducing the overall approved funds by not less than $1,500,000, reducing the total funds available to construct the town hall school administration building to $35,380,766 or less or take any other action related thereto. There's been a motion to pass over, and I heard a second. Uh, Finance Committee recommends disapproval of Article 45 discussion. Seeing none, we'll call for a vote. If you are in favor of passing over Article 45, so indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Voted and unanimously so. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to dissolve our annual town meeting. Motion, motion has been made and seconded. No discussion on a motion to dissolve. All those in favor of getting out of here, say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. <laughs> Voted.